harm. This Tobacco Road Sports Radio proudly presents to you 2020 high school football. We didn't think we were going to get to this point, but we're here. Desmond Johnson here with you. Rod Funderburg in the house. The Cougars taking on the Warriors tonight in the opening round, or excuse me, the opening week of the NCISAA regular season. Seven games will be competing. The Cougars will have four home games. We'll have all four of those games for you here at Tobacco Road Sports Radio. And then playoffs uh, after the fact. I bring in my partner, Rod Funderburg. And Rod, uh, these are two teams. Uh, Metrolina actually beat High Point Christian twice last year. And uh, the Cougars are going to be looking for revenge behind head coach Scott Bell. Oh, I'm sure they're going to be looking for revenge because they actually sent them home last year. Anytime a team sends you home, there's nothing like a little sweet revenge the following year. But I tell you what, Des, you said something. We didn't know that we would get to this point, and we are here now. You know, we thought COVID-19 may have ended the season for all high school football. For most high school football, it has been postponed to February. However, but the private association, such as uh, High Point Christian Academy, as well as Metrolina Christian Academy, they're able to play some football now and give us a little high school entertainment. So I am excited to be here, happy to be here, and I can just smell the grass and smell the hitting that's about to come up. Let your people know you can catch it live, 7 o'clock kickoff. We're about two minutes away from that. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Uh, you can go to Sports Carolina Monthly's YouTube channel. It's now streaming there, as well as Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Tobacco Road Sports Radio. We'll be back in just a minute. In Pint, the oldest tobacco and specialty store in the triad of North Carolina. Come check out the largest selection of cigars and pipes in the entire triad. Rare tobacco, accessories, complemented by the best curated selection of wine and craft beer in the area. Visit our High Point location at 3025 North Main Street in High Point or call 336 858-5298. Must be 21 to enter. Proud sponsor of Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Visit the Pipe and Pint today. Beamer Tire and Auto Repair. Now with three locations across the triad in High Point, Greensboro, and our new location in Kernersville. Beamer Tire and Auto offers full service auto repair. All tire brands, free alignment checks, oil changes, and more. In Kernersville, check out the no appointment needed quick lube shop. Check out their thousands of five star ratings via Google and Yelp. They care because they know that you can go anywhere. So try a shop with a beating heart, not a bottom line. Beamer Tire and auto repair. Visit us on Facebook or at BeamRetire.com. Hey guys, it's Desmond Johnson and I want to tell you about Retro King, the number one sneaker boutique in the triad. Buy, sell, and trade large selection of new and pre-owned sneakers. Latest popular releases like Jordan, Nike Air Max, Air Force One, SB Dunk, Bone Posit, Off-White, Adidas, Yeezy, including apparel by Supreme, Bait, Cause, Champion, and much, much more. And the best prices in the triad. Stop by today and check out their vast inventory selection conveniently located at 1531 Haynes Mall Boulevard in Winston-Salem, beside Cookout, across the street from Walmart. Monday through Thursday, 11.30 to 6.30, Friday and Saturday, 11.30 to 7.30, and Sunday, 12 to 5. Give them a call, 336-999-7000. Follow them on Instagram, at underscore retro underscore king. That's at underscore retro underscore king. Always look your best. Shop Retro King, the cleanest new and pre-owned shoes around, period. The specials never stop at Blue Naples Pizza, an Italian restaurant. Every day, you get a large two-topping pizza for only $11.99. On Sunday, watch football and enjoy our large one-topping pizza and 10 wings for only $17.99. Plus lunch specials every day of the week. Blue Naples Pizza, an Italian restaurant, 1519 Union Cross Road in Kernersville. You're listening to The Rundown. Uh, they're missing some parts, but Clemson's had the, like, the number one or number two uh, recruiting class in the country, it feels like, or at least top five, like mm-hmm. the past four or five years. So oh, it's yeah. not like they don't have kids on the on the sideline waiting for an opportunity, like exactly. four and five-star kids that we haven't heard about. Some talking heads out there have said, whoa, whoa this Clemson team, they don't have T. Higgins, they don't have these wide receivers, what are they going to do? They're going to just plug in the next two guys. Exactly, they, like they did the year doing. before, yeah. the year before when Mike doing Williams this- was there, you know, 
<laughs> if you don't win 10 plus games a year for like going this will be like the 10th year in a row if they do it this year you don't do that by depending on one or two guys and having a reload and then two years later you're back Justin's been steady the whole time from Sammy Watkins before Sammy Watkins DeAndre Hopkins for sure they have wide receiver I, ain't wor- I don't even know what the names are going to be I ain't even worried about that Trevor Lawrence will find them The Rundown with Desmond Johnson Saturdays at 10 a.m. right here on Tobacco Road Sports Radio Welcome back to High Point Athletic Park as High Point Christian Academy opens their 2020 high school football season with a home opener versus Metrolina Christian Academy. Desmond Johnson, Rod Funderburk in the house here with you and uh, getting ready to kick off here, Rod. Yeah, it is definitely football time. I mean, it's time and boom, there is the kickoff. And we are up and at it. The 2020 season is underway. That will be a touchback. The kicker yep. for uh, and Metrolina. Met- yep, Metrolina's kicker. He put that right through the end zone. I think that is Bryce okay. McPherson. Hopefully I said his name right. It's our first look at the uh, High Point Christian offense, led by quarterback Luke Hommel, head coach Scott Bell, who's been with the program since 2014. Diz, I tell you what, that offensive line – for High Point Christian Academy, I tell you, I'd hate to be the ones that have to feed those guys. Oh my they gosh. look like they can eat you out of a house and a home. We uh, we were looking at the rosters coming in here and didn't realize the gigantic size uh, of the High Point Christian uh, offensive line. Uh, actually, very comparative to some 4A and 4AA uh, lines that we've seen in the past, Rod. Definitely. definitely. First, first and 10, ball lined up at the 20-yard line. And we got an early whistle. It looks like the referee is stopping play, and it's a delay of game. So it looks like, you know, maybe High Point Christian Academy might be a little rusty. You know, it's been a pretty rough season, a rough start to training camp. You know, there were days when they thought they could train, and there were days where they could not train and get into training camp. So, you know, sometimes when that happens, you're going to have a few penalties here and there starting the game. That's just the rustiness sometimes of beginning the first game of football. And we're starting a little bit later than normal, but very happy to be starting period as uh, we come back here first down for the Cougars. Hommel and shotgun. He's going to hand off to his running back who finds a hole, but it closes quickly, and he's going to be gang tackled. He might have gained back the five yards they lost on that delay of game penalty, second down. Yeah, he picked up five yards. That was a good surge by the offensive line there. Uh, Led by, looks like the big number, 77, Ben Thomas, who's one of the offensive linemen. He's coming in at 6'4", just under 300 pounds. Like I said, (laughs) he's one of those guys that I know mom and dad hate to look at that grocery bill whenever he comes around. They they got a couple of uh, of, uh, guys on this offensive line we're going to talk about here over the course of this game. Second down. Looks like they're in a pistol formation. Second and 10, handoff again along the right-hand side, and he's going to break free. Close to the first down marker, run of about eight yards, and that's uh, number two for the Cougars, Cozy Pagano. Well, I tell you what, he did a great job coming around that right side. He was uh, there with the guard had led out and put a good block on the end there, and that allowed him to spring free and making it a third and very manageable, something like third and two coming up for the High Point Christian Academy, uh, High Point Christian Academy Cougars. Third and two for the Cougars. Luke Hommel, the quarterback in shotgun formation. They're in a pistol formation. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Hommel's going to keep it on a bootleg, come around the left-hand side. He's going to get the first down and more. He might get way more than that, Rod. He's open all the way down the field past the 20, the 10, and that's a touchdown for the Cougars on their opening drive. That is a touchdown by the quarterback, Luke Hommel, and there are no flags. Looks like no laundry on the field, so that touchdown will stand, and that is Luke's first touchdown of the 2020 season, and he does not do it with his arm, but instead he shows off that leg talent. 72-yard scamper into the end zone for quarterback Luke Hommel. And I tell you, Diz, you know, that drive may have looked a little too easy. When High Point came out, they were a little rusty on the first play, having a delay of game, but just three plays later, they punch it into the end zone. So the senior captain quarterback 
Tagging in at 6'1", 155. Saw him walking in with a cowboy hat earlier when I was coming in to set up here. Cool and confident, Rod. <laughs> and uh, runs it for a 72-yard run from their own 30. Scapers down the field. We've got a whistle on the extra point here. Might have been some movement on the line, and it is. Well, it looks like it was a timeout call. Oh, I a timeout believe. on the Cougars. I'm sorry. About yeah, that. I think maybe the play clock was running down, and they decided that they'd take one before allowing the kicker, the senior kicker, Jonathan uh, Metlin, I think his name is, to get a kickoff. So they're going to. So they're coming to the sidelines for a quick timeout. We'll take a quick one here ourselves. 30 second timeout. We'll be right back with you. High school football, Rod, here in the Triad. You're listening Love to. It. to Love it. You're listening to Tobacco Road Sports Radio. In Pint, the oldest tobacco and specialty store in the Triad of North Carolina. Come check out the largest selection of cigars and pipes in the entire Triad. Rare tobacco, accessories, complemented by the best curated selection of wine and craft beer in the area. Visit our High Point location at 3025 North Main Street in High Point or call 336-858-5298. Must be 21 to enter. Proud sponsor of Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Visit the Pipe and Pint today. And we're back here at High Point Athletic Park. Desmond Johnson, Rod Funderburg here with you, Tobacco Road Sports Radio. High Point Christian kicks the extra point and it is good. Yep, and the senior kicker, Jonathan Medlin, hits his first extra point of the season. And High Point Christian Academy Cougars, they have got to be feeling great about that first drive there. And I know Coach Bell should have a smile up under his COVID-19 mask right now. <laughs> it only took uh, less than two minutes, really. 10.23 left on the clock for the first quarter. Uh, and, the, and High Point on the board immediately. And you got to think, Rod, that they're thinking about the kids that are on this team from last year. Have to be thinking about the two losses they suffered to Metrolina from last year coming into this game and having to wait. And then wait even a little bit longer to actually get to this first game. So they've been thinking about this since they lost. That was their last loss in the playoffs last year was to this Metrolina team. So how lucky they get to face them week one of the 2020 season. And I tell you what, I'm sure they have been thinking about it all off season long. And that's why they came out and said that we're going to put the hammer down and we're not going to let up. And that's what it looks like High Point Christian Academy Cougars are about to do as they prepare for the kickoff. And Metrolina is no uh, small team themselves looking out across the field here, uh, Ron. And that ball is going to be kicked into the end zone for a touchback. The Warriors will start from their own 20. Yep, and John, Jonathan Medlin shows off his leg strength on that kick. He kicks it through the end zone where it will be a touchback. And Metrolina will come out, and they will begin at their own, looks like, 25, 30-yard line. Metrolina comes out in a shotgun formation behind quarterback Ryan McAvoy. McAvoy, hope I'm not butchering his name there. Well, it's the first game of the season. It's okay. <laughs> I'm sure they'll let us know about it before it's over with. Handoff. Picks up some positive yardage here for first down. About, about four yards on the carry. He's going to make it second and six. Yeah, that wasn't bad. That was uh, looks like the running back, uh, Tommy Miller, uh, who's a junior, 5'11", about 180 pounds. He had a great uh, trap block from his guard that was able to pick up those four, four and a half yards for Metrolina there. And Metrolina's going to see if they can put a drive together themselves and possibly tie this game up. So second down, second and six for the Warriors. And we got a whistle here at the snap. That's going to probably be a false start here, Rod, on Metrolina. Yeah, I believe someone on the offensive line got a little anxious and started moving just before the snap. And no, they're calling a yeah, mm -hmm. false, yeah, start. false start on Metrolina. So we're going to back this up. Yep, so it looks like it's going to be second and ten instead of second and five. So that's going to erase that first down play by the Warriors. Deep in their own territory here, 9.37 to go in the first quarter. Another handoff and stuffed. He might have got about two yards past the line of scrimmage. Number one, Luke Gaskins for Metrolina, 5'9", 170-pound senior. We should see a lot of him tonight, Rod. I think we will. Um, I, I tell you what, Metrolina's the last couple of plays have been trying to go up through the middle, but I tell you what. The High Point Christian Academy, they've got a pretty stout off defensive line. I don't know how often I try to run on those big guy fellas up front. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, they're pretty stout themselves. Uh, both these teams 
know each other very well, competing in the uh, Piedmont Triad Conference in the NCISAA. That's the Independent School Athletic Association for North Carolina. And it looks like we got a little bit more laundry on the field here. 8.52 to go. And that's probably going to be another false start. Yeah, it looks like Metrolina is walking backwards. And it is a false start on the Warriors. That's going to be on number 77 for Metrolina. Yep, number 77. Uh, uh, we don't know who that is. I'm not <laughs> sure if that's Zach <laughs> McDaniel, <laughs> uh, uh, who's the center guard, but uh, he got a false start there. So the, the Warriors are going in the wrong direction here, deep in their own territory. 8.52 to go here in the first quarter. Third down. Looks like it's about third and ten still. Every time they go forward, they go right back with a false start penalty. Yeah, and that's got to be eating the coach alive up over there on Metrolina's sideline. Another handoff to the right-hand side around the corner for a pickup of about three, taken down by Chase Cox, one of the Cox boys that are in the, uh, the middle of this field, uh, Rod. Two senior brothers, both 6'1", 220. So it's basically he's 6'1", 220, and there's two of them, and they're in the middle of this uh, defense here for High Point Christian. And it looks like they can run like the wind as well. So it's going to be a long day for those running backs as long as they continue to try to go between the tackles. I think the coach may need to draw something up so that they can get toward the outside of the field. Other than that, it could be a long day for this Metrolina offense. Meanwhile, Metrolina lines up to punt. Their first drive basically stalling right where they started around their 20. Punt is in the air. Going to take a bounce around the 50, roll to the 40. Gathered but tackled right around the 30 three-yard line of the Cougars. Yep, and that was Jalen Smith who uh, tried to pick the ball up. He's a junior wide receiver. He's coming in at 6'1", 185 pounds, but he did secure the ball and didn't allow it to go back any farther than it need, needed to. So uh, the Cougars will start on their own 34-yard line to begin this drive. High Point Christian has won two state championships in the past uh, six or seven years uh, under head coach Scott Bell in two different divisions in uh, NCISAA. Yeah, he's had a very successful seasons or six seasons here with the Cougars. You can't, he can't shake his head at that at all. And it looks like there was uh, offsides on Metrolina. The Warriors seem to be ready to come and get at this offensive line. So that defensive line looks like the nose guard jump. Metrolina has been very – now, granted, it's week one. Uh, it's the first action they've seen, first live bullets they've seen since, what, last December? So mm -hmm. uh, Metrolina seems like they're uh, a little jittery out there. First and five for the Cougars. Another run up the middle, flag yeah. on the field. Yeah, it looks like it could have been a hold there. I thought I saw possibly number 76 get a hold of uh, the defensive lineman there. Now, and that's what it is. It's a hold on the offense there. So that's going to cost them 10 yards, and I know Scott Bell is not going to be happy with that, or excuse me, Coach Bell is not going to be happy with that at all. Same thing Metrolina was running into in that first uh, drive that they had. They'd take you know, two steps forward, two steps back. Let's see if High Point will try to duplicate that. Now they had picked up the first down, but with the penalty, it's now uh, with 7.39 to go in the first quarter. They're looking at a first and 15. A little bit of a stuttered handoff there by Hommel and the backs up pick up maybe a yard as he ran through the middle of the line yeah it looked like uh number two Jordan Wilson who was carrying that ball looks like he was trying to figure out which hole he wanted to go through and couldn't quite figure it out and it gave the defense enough time to gather around him and pull him on down for just a minimal gain there so second down and about 11 for the Cougars ball on the Cougar 34 yard line uh, high point traveling from right to left on your radio dial. Yep, and the Cougars have a wide receiver on each side of their formation here. And a single setback in the pistol formation. Another handoff to the left this time between the guard and tackle, but Metrolina reads it perfectly. Really no gain on that. Maybe a yard, Rod. No, no gain at all. As a matter of fact, number 40, Julian Mercer, who's a middle linebacker, for Metrolina, he was sitting there waiting in the hole. He met the running back in the hole, 
got a great form tackle, and that's how you tackle. You wrap the guy up, you put your shoulder into him, and you bring him down, and that's exactly what he did. So it's going to bring up a crucial third down here. The Cougars have fought back to the original line of scrimmage. So it's about first and ten. The ball is on the Cougar 35-yard line. Hommel's going to drop back and shotgun the throw. He's got a man over the side, but well short of the first down. Yeah, they're about uh, four yards short of the first down, so it's probably going to bring a punting situation out for the Cougars here. I don't see anybody moving around on the sideline to punt. They might be uh, thinking about going for this here, Rod. Well, I'll tell you what. Oh, here we go. Yeah, now they're, they're moving them out. Yeah, okay. Here comes the punt team. <laughs> for a second there, I thought they might be uh, thinking about doing something. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't do anything this early and on my own side of the 50-yard line. Yeah, that might have been a... Might have been uh, costly there. Uh, yeah, you could you could <laughs> potentially give the other team a little momentum if they stop you. You know, your defense has played well on the first drive. They stopped Metrolina, so why not give it back to them? Now there was a little bit of a uh, a little bit of rain in the area. It's been coming and going. Punts in the air. Good punt. Mm -hmm. Scrambled to receive it. Now my, my return man has it. He's going to go around the left hand side. Yeah, they should have stopped the play. Yeah, because he was on his kneel. knee. Yeah, he mm -hmm. kneeled to pick up the ball and took off. It was a late whistle. So the ball's going to be placed right around the 25-yard line for the Warriors mm -hmm. as they start their second offensive drive of the night with 5.17 to go in the first quarter. Yep, and that was a really good kick by Jonathan Medlin there. He did a good or good job on that punt. And here comes Metrolina. They're coming out on the field, trying to get lined up. They're not even going to huddle. So it looks like the coach has already known what he wanted to draw up on this first drive or this first play of their second drive. So Metrolina comes back out for their second drive here. And let's see what they do. They didn't try a pass in that first drive. Let's see if they try to, to do that here on the second one. And they do drive back to pass pretty spiral down the sideline, but the man was not open. Quarterback was looking for number 88. Yep, yeah, but he threw Ryan him just Kearns. short. Had he gotten the ball there, he could have, uh, you know, really caused some damage on that particular play. But – the Cougars did bring some pressure up the middle, so the quarterback for Metrolina had to get rid of the ball fairly quickly. Second down, second and 10, 5.08 to go in the first quarter. Desmond Johnson and Rod Funderburg here with you at High Point Athletic Park. No fans in attendance, kind of a wet night, rainy night. But this is a beautiful field, Des. I love the it way is. this field it is manicured. It it's really is. Really very lovely. 7-0, High Point uh, leading Metrolina right now, halfway through the first quarter. Second and ten. Ball is snapped. Handoff. Big hole opens up in the middle for number one for Metrolina, and he's still churning those legs. He's got a first down. He might have more than that. He's past the 50, past the 40, past the 30. No one's going to catch him. 20-10. Touchdown, Metrolina. Wow. And that was a heck of a run play. I'll tell you what. Luke Gaskins. That play was made. Wait. There's some laundry on the field. There is a flag. It's coming back. A little bit past the 50-yard line. Oh, we got a hold on Metrolina. And that's going to bring that back, Rod. Yeah, it looks like it is. But I tell you what, old Andrew Threat, number 70, the big senior, 6'4", 255 pounds, he is the one that actually sprung the running back on that one. He made a heck of a block right up the middle that the running back cut right off of, and he was out the gate. But great run. But by, when you uh, have penalties, Gaskins. when you have penalties, they come back. So and the hold was down the field, Dez, which right. is going to make it a first down. Uh, but in situations like that, sometimes you don't need to have a hold block in the back or anything. Just let the running back do what he does. And uh, but sometimes these things happen. Usually wide receivers, they get a little overzealous and they want to do more than they need to. And in this particular case, they wound up uh, committing a penalty. So no touchdown for the Warriors, but they will get the first down. So it's first and 10. The ball has been placed after the penalty marked off around the Warriors' 44-yard line going from left to right on your radio dial. Down 7-0 early to the Cougars. Fake handoff on the snap. Pass up the middle to number 15. Caught for a first down. Yeah, but number 15 is Tommy Miller. That was a great pitch and catch by the quarterback and wide receiver. It was a nice little slant. Tommy went in just outside of the corner who was playing a zone defense, and he caught that ball just inside and then was tackled by the safety. So good play by the offense there, the Warriors. Metrolina in a hurry-up offense. They line up quickly here at their own 49-yard line. First down, quarterback scrambling, trying to find something, but he's going to get swarmed by Cougars. 
he did not make it back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Cougars were all over the place on that one, on the scramble. You can't scramble that long with, against a hungry defense. They're going to come and eat you out, and that's exactly what happened there. McElvoy, the quarterback for Metrolina, was in no man's land trying to do a bootleg around the left, just trying to get out of the way, and ended up running to about four high point Christian Cougars waiting for him there. Metrolina's looking to the sideline. It's second down, second and ten, looking for instructions for the next play. Yep, and on a play like this, Des, you, what you want to do is you want to try and pick up some of it. You don't have to try and go out and pick up the whole 10, 11 yards, but you want to pick up five or six so you can make third down manageable. Second and 10, ball snapped in pistol formation again. Run right up the middle. Good for about four yards for the Warriors. Looks like that was... Yep, and that's what we were talking about. Metrolina, you know, they ran it up the middle, so it looks like it's going to be about third and six. And uh, not the best situation on third down, but it is a situation where it can be fairly manageable. Depending on the defense, you know, you run a screen here if they've been aggressive. If they haven't, you can go back to your slant. But there are trips on the right side of Metrolina's offense. McAvoy drops back. He's going to uncork one down the sideline. The wide receiver wasn't even looking. There was two Cougars in the area. Incomplete. Yep. Yep, number 15, Jalen Smith for the Cougars had a better shot at that ball than Metrolina's own wide receiver because he never even turned around and saw it. And Jalen Smith, who's at his safety position, was heading over there to try and intercept that thing, but he was unable to get to it. So that's going to bring up fourth down. Metrolina's going to go for it here at, on the, uh, the Cougars' 43. This is kind of early here, 255 to go in the first quarter. And they're gonna they're gonna try to looks like well, they're trying to get them to go off sides yeah, here. They may try and draw them the old draw us off sides play. Try to hit them with the old razzle dazzle and it didn't work. Yeah, Whistle and uh, they're gonna have to call a timeout. Yeah, but obviously they have been coached very well by Scott Bell and his staff, making sure that they did not go off sides. Let's take a quick thirty second timeout. Two fifty five to go here in the first quarter. High Point Christian seven, Metrolina zero. Beamer Tire and Auto Repair, now with three locations across the triad in High Point, Greensboro, and our new location in Kernersville. Beamer Tire and Auto offers full-service auto repair, all tire brands, free alignment checks, oil changes, and more. In Kernersville, check out the no-appointment-needed Quick Lube Shop. Check out their thousands of five-star ratings via Google and Yelp. They care because they know that you can go anywhere. So try a shop with a beating heart, not a bottom line. Beamer Tire and auto repair. Visit us on Facebook or at BeamRetire.com. Welcome back to High Point Athletic Park. Desmond Johnson, Rod Funderburg from Tobacco Road Sports Radio here with you as Metrolina punts. And a little bit of a rain starting to pour down here in High Point. The ball's going to go out of bounds right around the seven yard line for the Cougars. Yep, and the Cougars they're going to start off in probably the worst field position that they've had in, at least in 2020. Um, but they're going to have to go a long way down the field to score on this drive. At least 94 yards is what it looks like. But I tell you what, they've got the horses to do it. I tell you, that big number 72, I just can't get over the size of that guy <laughs> for the Cougars. Oh, and yeah, man. Number 72, I tell you, Terrell Walker, Terrell Walker. He, he's a junior. He's 6'4". Good Lord, he's a junior. He'll be back next year. But he's 6'4", 320 pounds. Can you imagine this guy gaining another 20 pounds and possibly <laughs> growing another three inches? Yes, I bet Scott Bell can imagine it also. First down and 10, handoff to the running back number two, uh, Cozy Pagano, and he's still running free up to the 35 almost. Big gain of about 25 yards for Pagano. Oh, excuse me, for Jordan Wilson, number two. Yeah, Jordan Wilson, he looked great on that run there. And I tell you what, he was in the grasp of one of the defenders, and he just refused to go down. And he kept his feet churning, which is what a good running back is supposed to do. And I tell you what, if he keeps it up, we can look forward to seeing him play on Saturdays in the near future. That's going to bring up a first down. Gets the Cougars out of the shadow of, their, uh, of the, uh, the end zone there. Another quick handoff on a sweep to Miles Crisp. He's going to get a couple of yards as he cut up around the right-hand side of the, the uh, Cougars line. Second yep. down. Man, looks like he was trying to get around the corner, but he cut it up a little sooner than I expected him to. I figured he'd try to get a little closer to the edge and try and dart down that sideline. 
But obviously he saw a crease and thought he could make it, but he did pick up positive yardage. Looks like he got about four yards there on that play. High Point Christian Football brought to you by Beamer Tire and Auto Repair and the Pipe and Pint. Go check them all. Go check them both out here in High Point. Second down, pass thrown and caught for first down. Up around the f almost to the, the 45, the Cougars 45. It's going to move the chains. That was number eight, Miles Crisp again. 6'1 junior uh, wide receiver. Got some size on him, Rod. 195 pounds, built pretty solid. They got him as a slot back off uh, outside linebacker and a kick returner. He's out there playing wide receiver tonight or the flanker role, I guess you could say. Oh, yeah. The quarterback did a good job on that last play. He had pressure coming on that side from the defender, number two, who was at the outside linebacker position, and he threw it right into the pressure and found his receiver and picked up great yardage. Another first down, Hommel takes the shotgun snap, pitches it again to number two, who's going to weave his way through traffic, being held up. He picked up a good chunk of yards, though, about six yards. Again, Jordan Wilson. Jordan Wilson, and he was hard to bring down. And I tell you what, when your running back is hard to bring down, you know, that pumps that offensive line up. They say if our running back is working that hard, we've got to get in this game and we've got to help him out some. So if you saw at the end of that play, there were quite a bit of offensive linemen for the Cougars who were coming up trying to give him some extra support run block. So I can expect these Cougars will continue to run this ball because it is a rainy night. And I expect that they will try and control this line of scrimmage as we go down on this drive. 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter. 7-0 to lead by High Point Christian over Metrolina. Ball is snapped. Another handoff to Wilson. And he's going to be brought down right around the first down marker. We'll see where they place this ball. Yeah, he's close. I think he's just short, though. But you're talking about third and very, very manageable. Third and one. And looks like that's the end of the first quarter. First quarter's over. High Point Cougars 7, Metrolina Warriors 0. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Friday High School Football Game of the Week on Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Auto Repair, now with three locations across the triad in High Point, Greensboro, and our new location in Kernersville. Beamer Tire and Auto offers full-service auto repair, all tire brands, free alignment checks, oil changes, and more. In Kernersville, check out the no-appointment-needed Quick Lube Shop. Check out their thousands of five-star ratings via Google and Yelp. They care because they know that you can go anywhere. So try a shop with a beating heart, not a bottom line. Beamer Tire and Auto Repair. Visit us on Facebook or at BeamRetire.com. Welcome to the Pipe and Pint, the oldest tobacco and specialty store in the triad of North Carolina. Come check out the largest selection of cigars and pipes in the entire triad. Rare tobacco, accessories, complemented by the best curated selection of wine and craft beer in the area. Visit our High Point location at 3025 North Main Street in High Point or call 336 858 5298. Must be 21 to enter. Proud sponsor of Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Visit the Pipe and Pint today. Welcome back to action. Second quarter start here in High Point. High Point Cougars taking on the Metrolina Warriors. And that was third down, and Hommel tried to find a receiver down the field incomplete. Yep, he went for the long run ball on that one. He tried to hit uh, his wide receiver there, but it was on the sidelines and just a little toward out of bounds. So I suspect that High Point will go for it on this fourth Looks and like one. Looks like they are, yeah. yeah. They're huddling up here. They're, they're on their own side, the right side of the 50. The ball is at the... Warriors 45 yard line. It's a fourth and about one to go. Mm -hmm. I expect Jordan Wilson to get this ball, and I expect maybe they'll hand it off to him and let him do his thing. They line up in pistol formation again. Wide running back to the left of the uh, quarterback. He's going to keep it himself on a sneak. He's going to get the first down. He hits the sideline. He's going to keep going past the 30, the 20. No one's going to catch him, and a touchdown again by Luke Hommel on a bootleg to the left. Well, Dez, you know, I thought he was going to give it to the running back, which is exactly why I'm sitting in the booth with you and not coaching <laughs> down on the field. But Man. the quarterback kept it, and, hey, why not go back to the one of the plays that got you your first touchdown of the game? And that's exactly what the Cougars did. And they are smiling all the way to the bank right now. Hommel's got two touchdown rushing touchdowns uh, in this first half already, a 72-yard run earlier that made the uh, score 7-0. to And now this one... About a 45-yarder. 
this made the score 13 to 0 with 11:38 to go. Yep, and Jonathan Medlin lines up to attempt the extra point. And he's been perfect so far on the night. And he had a little pressure up the middle. No good. And that kick is no good. So it looks like that pressure up the middle may have distracted Jonathan Medlin just a little bit to throw him off. So he's 50% for the night on extra points. Uh, but he will get set to line up for the kickoff. And we do have a, I don't call it a downpour. It's kind of a steady mist that's falling here at High Point Athletic Park. We are proud to bring to you the only high school football in the triad tonight. As you know, uh, all the public schools are out. Yeah, it looks like Luke got it too far inside. So yep, public schools are not playing football right now, so I suspect that they're probably listening or doing something over the airwaves to try and get a taste of what high school football would be like had they been in action public this schools particular will, season. They'll be back in February on a uh, shortened seventh game schedule. We'll have uh, that for you, of course. You know, we are Tobacco Road Sports Radio is the home of East Forsyth football, so we'll bring that to you in February. And maybe some surprises, too. We'll let you know as we get closer to it. Yeah, well, I can't wait, man. It's almost like football all year round because of COVID-19. Of course, we started late, but it could go all year round <laughs> once we do start. Man, look, I I almost I caught myself. I almost complained to my wife the other night that there was too much sports going on. Really? Was, yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I caught myself right before I said it. She kind of looked at me funny right before it came out. That's a touchback on the kickoff here. But well, the other night it was like Lakers were playing and Monday Night Football was on. It was Cam versus Russ, Russell Wilson and uh, Stanley Cup playoffs are going on and Major League Baseball is about to start playing. I mean, it's, it's, and this NASCAR, is never going to happen NASCAR again. NASCAR has their news. I mean, <laughs> everything's going on right now. Oh. Yet, let's not complain about this type of sports <laughs> right now. That does remind me we had breaking news uh, that came out about 20 minutes ago. I didn't get a chance to say it on the air, but the Pac-12, Rod, has agreed to play a seven-game slate starting in November. Oh, wow. So they're back, too. So all Power 5 conferences will be playing, um, and potentially we're still going to have a college football playoff here now that they're all going to be competing here. First and 10 for the Warriors, 11.34 to go in the first. A run right up the middle for some hard yardage, about six yards on the play. We'll set up a second and short. Definitely, and that was Joe Dilly for Metrolina. He came right up the middle. They, uh, Metrolina found a soft spot in this Cougars defense, and they're trying to expose it. He picked up about eight yards, so it is second and short, and I expect Metrolina to possibly go for a long bomb here, knowing that if they miss it, they do have a third and short that will be coming up. But Metrolina's trying to get the final call from the sideline, and we will see how they respond to this touchdown that was just scored by the Cougars. Second and four for Metrolina. Ball is snapped. Another handoff right up the middle, trying to follow his blockers, but not getting well, might have got right up to the line. Pick up about three. We'll I see where they he, spot the ball. He picked up the first down on that I think one. He scored it out there at the end. Yeah, they're gonna move the chains. They're not even gonna they're not even gonna measure it. So first down for the Warriors. Down early, 13 to nothing, 10 38 to go. Uh, these two teams have history with each other. Metrolina was the final loss for the Cougars last year in the playoffs. They also handed them a regular season loss. Uh, last year as well. Yep, in Metrolina, they're out of Indian Trail, North Carolina, so they took the trip up here to High Point to take on the Cougars tonight. And, of course, they're going to do all they can to go away with the win. First and ten, another handoff this time to the left-hand side. Nice little pickup there of about four yards. Yep, and that was just an off-tackle play uh, where they blocked that alignment. They blocked down, and then you saw the guard come out and try and kick out the defensive end and, of course, the running back. Followed him through the hole, and he picked up about five yards there. Right at, well, maybe four and a half yards there uh, to make a second and about six for now, Metrolina. Now, last year, the High Point Christian defense gave up about 16 and a half points per game, which is really good, Rod. They uh, pitched three shutouts in 2019. Um, they've lost some graduates to that side, but they do have the Cox brothers chasing Colby uh, at the linebacking level. Second down. Hand off to the left. Found some mm -hmm. room. Got the first down. He did. And got up close to the uh, excuse me, the Warriors' 45-yard line. It's going to move the chains again. Little, little Nice little drive Metrolina is trying to put together here. Well, that was an excellent block by number 50, Alex Green. As he came and pulled around, he was able to catch the defensive end and pin him to the inside. And that allowed the running back to get to the edge and pick up those yards for the first down. So excellent execution by the offensive line. And the running back just following on up in to do his thing. First and 10 for Metrolina. 
on the ball is on the Warriors 45 in our line. There's a fumble on the snap, and it looks like the Cougars might have fell on that. Let's see who the ball that is. It's going to be close. Looks like the Cougars believe they have it. Did he signal for Cougars or is he pointing at a player? Let's well, see what's happening here. Nobody's really leaving the field. I'm not sure who came up with the ball. I don't even see where the ball is. Me either. Uh, looks like the ball is going to remain with Metrolina. The Warriors are going to keep the ball. Looks like it's going to be second and 11 on that particular play. They lost one yard due to the quarterback not being able to hold on to the ball. It, it looks like the mist has stopped for, for now, uh, Rod, in terms of uh, the rain that was falling, the moisture that was falling earlier. Uh, so that ball might be a little wet. Well, I'll tell you what, the quarterback, Ron McAvoy, I'm sure, you know, like all quarterbacks, they're anxious to throw the ball. So he's a pretty good-looking quarterback out there for the Metro Lunar Warriors. He's a senior sitting at 6'1", 180 pounds as he gets ready for the next play. And That's it looks like he short-hopped that one. Yeah. Uh, tried to throw that out into the flats to his wide receiver, but he was unable to get the ball to him. Looks like number 13 had some running room out there. His number 13 was Gunner, Gunner Moen. Yeah, the tight end. Yep, so he was out there in the flats, and he had a little bit of room if a quarterback would have just been able to get it to him. So that's going to bring up third and long, third and 11 for the Warriors here, traveling from right to left on your radio dial, dressed in white with red trim. The Cougars dressed in their blue home jerseys with white pants, white helmets. Ball is snapped. Passes in the air. And that was short hop, too. I don't know if they're going to call that a completion or not. They are going to call it a completion. I thought it hit the ground there. They're right? calling it a completion. I'm with you, Dez. It looked like the ball hit the ground, but, of course, I'm way up here. I wear glasses, and they don't <laughs> always work all the time. So possibly the refs on the field saw it much, much clearer than I did. Well, there, there doesn't seem to be any argument about it. The chains have moved, and the Warriors, is their best drive of the night so far, are now all the way down. This drive started on their own 20-yard line. They're now down to the Cougars. 40, yep. first and 10. And what's important about this drive, Dez, is that the Warriors are not allowing the Cougars to get back on the field. They're keeping that offense off the field, and they're running this clock to try and make this game a little more respectable. First and 10, fake the handoff for the quarterback for the Warriors. He's going to complete a pass to his tight end. He's going to get past the first down marker. And that was a pretty good play. Uh, where it looked like his running back, number 22, was going to stay in and block Colin Fitch. Mm -hmm. And instead, Colin allowed the, his, the defender to come on in, and he turned around, caught the quick pass, and was able to pick up the first down to keep the chains moving. It keeps Metrolina Warriors on the field, and it also keeps the high point Cougars off the field. High point Christian football brought to you by Beamer Tire and Auto Repair and the Pipe and Pint in high point. First down for the Warriors. McAvoy, another fumble, and this time, actually, it looks like the Warriors might have got on it again. No, uh, they didn't. And it's a turnover by the Warriors, and it looks like High Point Christian Academy Cougars will take over, and that looked like such a promising drive. It did. For the Warriors. I nice, mean, they nice were a mix of passing and running. They had some long plays, some short plays, uh, but again, shooting themselves in the foot, almost lost a fumble back here. Uh, on the other side of the 50, got lucky on that one. They did. They did. And perhaps that was foreshadowing on this particular drive that, hey, you got lucky once, but I don't know if the sun is going to shine on you twice, especially <laughs> right here at the end of September. So the so the, the Cougars still have a 13-0 lead, 6.55 to go here in the first quarter. Desmond Johnson and Rod Funderburg here with you in the booth in High Point. High Point Christian taking on Metrolina Christian. And that's going to be a handoff to Jordan Wilson. He's going to try to get to the edge. He's going to actually carry some guys with him for some positive yardage about a gain of about seven yeah this jordan wilson kid is pretty impressive there is no way in the world he should have picked up those that many yards on that play i mean he was surrounded he didn't have any block and he just kept running kept his feet turning which is what you're supposed to do as a good running back i tell you i expect to see this game. matter of fact he picked up the first down they gave him the first down they did Yep, so I first did. And ten. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I definitely expect to see this young man, Jordan Wilson, playing on Saturdays in the next couple of years because he ju is just a junior. Hommel and shotgun. He's got a, a running back to the left, of, or excuse me, behind him. They're going to hand off to him. That's Jordan Wilson. Almost gets tackled in the backfield. Jukes two defenders. Got some more in front of him, and finally he ran to about seven of them and couldn't get going forward. So that's going to be a loss of yardage. Uh, 
Looks like yep. they're going to get dri driven way back about almost about 10 yards off from the, where the original line of scrimmage was on first down. Yep, and the Metrolina Warriors needed a defensive play like that. Sometimes, you know, as the old saying goes, let's bend but not break. And uh, Metrolina, they, they needed something. You know, the offense has not been able to get clicking. And the defense has probably come out and said, hey, guys, we got to help our offense out right here. And on that play, they did all that they could, bringing up a second and about 12 yards for the Cougars. 5.38 to go here in the half. High point with the ball. They're going to go down the field, try one. they got a man wide open, and he catches it. Number 15, he's going to score. Oh, my goodness, that was fast. 65-yard wow. touchdown reception. And that was Jalen Smith on the reception. Jalen Smith is a junior wide receiver, 6'1", 185 pounds. And Jalen Smith did not break a stride when the quarterback put that down all the way on him. Oh, Luke Hommel, that was a strike. So Luke now has three touchdowns, two by coming uh, in rushing, rushing form and one in the air. So I Luke is having a heck of a night tonight. Hopefully the teachers will be lenient on him tomorrow <laughs> as he comes in the school. The, uh, I um, actually I actually did, I thought he overthrew him for a second because he was over here towards our side where the uh, score box is, but uh, to Smith's credit, he outran his defender, got underneath that ball and ran it in. Extra point is up and it is good. Yep, and that is Jonathan Medlin, his Extra point is good, so Jonathan is about 66% on the evening. And the Cougars get set to take a break and get ready for kickoff. Looking for actual triad sports coverage, Rod? Tobacco Road Sports Radio has you covered every Saturday morning. Check out new sports talk shows discussing what you want to hear. Panthers, Hornets, NASCAR, high school sports in the triad, ACC, Big Four, and much more. Shows as the pre shows such as the pregame with Brian Snow, the score with Brett Wiseman, and, of course, the rundown with Desmond Johnson. Tune in every Saturday morning starting at 9.30 a.m. and get your sports weekend started off on the right foot. That's TobaccoRoadSportsRadio.com. The replay of this game will be on TobaccoRoadSportsRadio.com tomorrow. We'll be running a double header. We'll have this game, and then uh, we'll probably play this game earlier, around 5, Rod. And then at 8 o'clock, we got a dandy, Rod, uh, one of my favorite calls, mm -hmm. the 2019 4A state championship game, East Forsyth versus oh, wow. Cardinal Gibbons. Uh, we'll be running that game tomorrow night at 8 p.m., so a double header of football tomorrow. And that, that was a heck of weekend. a game, man. That was it was. A, if you missed that game, you missed a treat, I tell you. So definitely tune in tomorrow night. If you're if you're missing and craving Friday night high school football, we've got you covered all night tomorrow on TobaccoRoadSportsRadio.com. This is going to be a touchback. So the Warriors will start off again from their own 20-yard line. And Jonathan Medlin, again, with an, a great kick. He's showing his leg strength. And Jonathan Medlin is a senior and he's at six feet 185 pounds pretty good looking kicker out there and the cougars will get set to go on defense as the warriors come out and try and figure out how to cut this 21 to nothing deficit the metrolina has won the last three times these teams have played 28 21 the 2018 playoffs 24 14 in the regular season last year and a beat down rod 42 to 14 last year in the playoffs so you think some of these kids didn't have that last game in their mouth uh, coming in here tonight. Oh, yeah, Devin. This play is stopped on the whistle. Looks like someone on the offense got a little anxious and jumped. And, and for those that are uh, listening with us on Facebook uh, Live, we appreciate you uh, joining in with us over the course of the season. You'll also be able to hear this on Twitter and the Sports Chronicle Monthly YouTube channel. But for tonight, a special presentation here on Facebook Watch for Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Pound that like button. Follow us on Facebook to get the latest news and sports uh, around the triad. You know, Dez, uh, this seems to be the only ticket in the triad it as is. far as high school football goes, right? Nope, there's no, nobody else is playing, and no other independent schools have football teams in the triad. Trust me, I checked. Um, <laughs> none of them are <laughs> playing, um, or, no, or none of them even have a team. So very thankful that High Point Christian is allowing us to come in and broadcast this out to the triad uh, for those that are craving some high school football action. First and 10 for the Warriors. They're going to drop back and go deep right away. Had a man, got turned around, and because of that, there's uh, laundry on the field. That's going to be a pass interference call on the defense there, Rod. Yeah, definitely a pass interference call on the defense, but it looked like they could have been offsetting penalties. I think the ref missed a, a lineman down the field there. Mm. 
because there were some linemen who who went out. Looked like they were trying to set up a screen pass down here, but looks like that call may have been missed. So we have the pass interference on the defense. And you got you could tell from up here in the box the wide receiver got turned around all the way from almost a 180 from his left side all the way around. And uh, your ears are not deceiving you. Those are cheerleaders. There are cheerleaders here from both sides, uh, braving the elements on the track, cheering on their teams. No yes. one in the fans. Uh, no one in the stands, though. Yes, yes, they are out here, like you said, braving the elements, and God bless them. Because I tell you, I'm too old to go out there and mess with the elements anymore. <laughs> I can't do it. So looks like uh, we'll see what's happening here because they're moving the chains back the other way. You might have been right, Rod. They might have caught them both. I don't think they did. I think what it was, you know, in high school, I think the pass interference is 10 yards in the automatic first down. Oh, it's not the spot down. of the foul. You're it's right. It's not the spot of the foul, and that's where they were, a lot of the kids were heading to, the spot of the foul. So the ball's going to be moved up to the 28, the, the Warriors 28, handoff here on first down. Not much of a gain. So the running back is driven back through the hole he came in, and it might be a loss of yards. Looks like he picked up a few yards. Uh, they kind tried to forward come motion. right through the teeth of that defense, but I tell you what, the Cougar defense is stout in the middle, and they're not going to be easy to run on. And I tell you what, you can see big number 76 over there. He's a big boy. And uh, I think that's Ben Thomas, maybe a senior, 6'4", 285 pounds. He is not someone you want to just run right into. There's some big kids back here on the uh, on the high point. Uh Christian Academy's defense as well. We've raved about their offensive line size, but their defense is no slouch either. Yes, sir. Second down, looking deep. has got a man, and it's dropped. Dropped wow. at the 30. He was about 40 yards out and had his man beat. If he had caught that, he'd probably still be running. Oh, he definitely would have been running. He would have had to score, and he's going to have nightmares about dropping that ball. And I tell you what. His teammates are going to give him some slack come tomorrow. They won't bother <laughs> him today, but they're going to mess with him tomorrow, and they're going to let him have it about dropping that one because that was a touchdown, and that ball was dropped by number 88. 88. Brian Kearns. Yep, Brian Kearns, who's a wide receiver. He's sitting at 6'2", 185 pounds. Looks like he had some speed on him, too. He yeah, he had, gone. Some, he had a little jets on him there. Yeah, he oh, kind of yeah. separated from his defender there. Yes, sir. But it's going to bring up a third and about seven. The Warriors are forced to pass. Ball is tipped, but still caught by the Warriors for the first down. Past the 50 to around the 48, and a late a late block by a Cougar who basically kind of Lex Luger power slammed the kid to the, to the ground, and a ref just happened to see it. So that's going to add some yards to the end of this play, Rod. Oh, yeah, and that was a good catch by Tommy Miller, and that was a good little shake that the quarterback did. He did a little fake move. He did. spinned <laughs> around. And he, he confused me for a second. <laughs> like, what's going on here? <laughs> Faked me out up here in the uh, scorer's box. Yeah, he did. So you could tell he's filling the game a little bit more now. And, of course, as long as the Warriors can avoid any penalties and if they can avoid any turnovers, they're putting together a nice little drive here. Now, last time they did this, they ended up turning the ball over on a fumble right around the same area of the field. Let's see if uh, Metrolina can get on the board here. The ball is right around the 34-yard line. The Cougars 34. They're on the other side of the field now. McElvoy's going to drop back. He's got a man wide open and broken up at the last second by the defensive back. And actually, he's running. He, he intercepted, intercepted that ball. He yes. intercepted the he ball. He intercepted it. He's running back out. It's number three, Cozy Pagano. And he's out of bounds at the Cougar 25. Yep, the ball was tipped, and the defender caught it before it hit the ground. And, you know, I hope I didn't jinx the Warriors. You know, every time you <laughs> say that, you said it, I was like, oh, God, <laughs> something's going to happen to these kids. Yeah, you know, I said, it, you know, as long as they don't have any turnovers or penalties and oh. the very next play, here they go with the turnover. Oh, man. So hopefully they won't hold that one against me. They, uh... <laughs> I'm sure the High Point Christian Academy Cougars won't hold it again. No, I, they're probably very thankful, very <laughs> thankful. So another another great drive uh, thwarted by the Cougars' defense here with another turnover. Scores 20-0, to 0, 3.30 left in the half. Quarterback Luke Hommel gets his offense set up here. Now remember last year this defense had three shutouts, but none against Metrolina. Matter of fact, they lost to Metrolina twice. And that's going to be an incomplete pass. Yep, and the quarterback threw that one just wide. I think he expected the receiver to break a little bit harder to the outside. And either the receiver lost his footing or the quarterback just threw it really quick. And it looks like we have a lineman that's down. 
So we've got an official yeah. timeout to take care of an injured player. Let's uh, let's break away from the action here real quick. You're listening to the Friday night presentation, high school football game of the week here on Tobacco Road Sports Radio. We'll be back in just a minute. Welcome to the Pipe and Pint, the oldest tobacco and specialty store in the triad of North Carolina. Come check out the largest selection of cigars and pipes in the entire triad. Rare tobacco, accessories, complemented by the best curated selection of wine and craft beer in the area. Visit our High Point location at 3025 North Main Street in High Point or call 336 558-5298. Must be 21 to enter. Proud sponsor of Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Visit the Pipe and Pint today. The specials never stop at Blue Naples Pizza, an Italian restaurant. Every day, you get a large two-topping pizza for only $11.99. On Sunday, watch football and enjoy our large one-topping pizza and 10 wings for only $17.99. Plus lunch specials every day of the week. Blue Naples Pizza and Italian Restaurant, 1519 Union Cross Road in Kernersville. Beamer Tire and Auto Repair, now with three locations across the triad in High Point, Greensboro, and our new location in Kernersville. Beamer Tire and Auto offers full-service auto repair, all tire brands, free alignment checks, oil changes, and more. In Kernersville, check out the no appointment needed Quick Lube Shop. Check out their thousands of five-star ratings via Google and Yelp. They care because they know that you can go anywhere. So try a shop with a beating heart, not a bottom line. Beamer Tire and Auto Repair. Visit us on Facebook or at BeamerTire.com. Welcome back to the action here at High Point Athletic Park. High Point Christian Academy taking on Metrolina Christian Academy. Desmond Johnson and Rod Funderburg here with you on the live call here exclusively on Tobacco Road Sports Radio's Facebook Watch. Thank you for joining us for a little high school football action here tonight. 20-0 to is your score, 323 to go in the second quarter. High Point Christian lines up for second down, and he is taking the quarterback almost taken down for a sack. Yep, number 13, uh, Gummer Moen was on the blitz, the outside linebacker there. Junior, 5'11", 175 pounds. It was almost like he was in a huddle and knew exactly what the snap count was because as soon as the quarterback, Hommel, got the ball, he was all over him. He was back there in the backfield pretty quick. Um, so that's going to back up the Cougars here. Story of the first half so far, Rod, has been turnovers as the, the miss, the heavy miss starts to fall again. I can see in the... Uh, the Friday night lights here at High Point Athletic Park. So third and long for the Cougars. Yeah, it looks like third and about two miles. Hommel's going to try to throw it two miles. He's got a wide receiver, catches it. And he's, and he's completed the pass. First down. For the first down, wow. About a 25-yard reception from, uh, from Hommel to his wide receiver, number 20. Looks like number 26. Aston no, 28. Parker. No, number 28. 28's not listed on the roster, he but number not. 28 had a heck of a catch just now that, to give the Cougars a first down. And that was in a rain that just started about five minutes ago when we went yep. to that commercial break. It started raining again here. And it looks like there was a penalty. There was a roughing the passer on that last play, so it's going to tack on a few more yards. Another 15 yards on top of that. It's about a 40-yard gain. Puts the... Cougars across in their own territory now lined up first and 10 at their own 42 yard line. Hommel and Shotgun's going to fake the handoff, going to pass it out to an open wide receiver. Gets past one guy, gets past another guy. He's coming down the sideline, jukes a third and tackled at the 20. Number seven for High Point Christian, Jackson Clark. Yep, Jackson Clark looked really good on that play, and he's a senior wide receiver. I'm sure he's looking to get a little bit of action his last year playing in high school. Uh, he he looked excellent on that play. He drew it up just for him. So first and 10, 2.06 to go here in the half. We'll uh, talk a little sports with you guys during the halftime show. A lot of stuff going on around the world of sports right now. Hommel 
Takes the snap, finds a wide receiver again, this time to the left, close to the first down marker. That was number eight, Miles Chris, who's been busy this half. Yep, Miles Chris had a pretty good catch. I actually thought that ball may have gotten knocked down by the defensive end, but somehow Hommel got it just above him and over him. But it looks like we've got an official timeout. We have another injury on the field. Looks like it could be a cramp. We're hoping it's a cramp and nothing more serious than that. Tobacco Road Sports Radio and Sports Carolina Monthly are your home for high school sports in the triad. Tune in all day Saturday starting at 9 a.m. as we live stream Blue Chip Academy's Fall High School Basketball League, the West Division out of Winston-Salem. Uh, some of the top teams in high school basketball competing in that uh, fall league. Then at 3 p.m., tune in to a high school doubleheader each Saturday with Brian Snow live from the West Division, sponsored by Retro King. Tobacco Road Sports Radio, your new home for triad sports. All right, and we just got word that number 28 is actually Isaiah Sanders. He's a sophomore, uh, plays defense and offense. He's 5'10", 160 pounds. So he's looking pretty good tonight. Remember, he's a number 28. Yep, yeah. number 28 is Isaiah Thomas. We were wondering who that guy was. Cause, uh, oh, it's Isaiah Sanders, excuse me. We did not have him on the roster, but we do now. I don't know so. where in the world I got Isaiah Thomas from. <laughs> He might Something be a little too short. On, yeah. Might be a little too short for uh, for this game. Well, I don't know if he's running behind this uh, this Cougars uh, offensive line, he might be able to pick up a hundred. Oh, the game he, here. he can definitely pick up a hundred. I think behind that offensive line, I could pick up a hundred. <laughs> and you know, I run as slow as a snail. I think I probably run about an eight three forty. Just put your hand on one of their backs and just let them lead. Yes, sir. Let them lead. Yes, sir. So uh, the injured uh, player for High Point. Um, it's coming off the field on his own accord. It's number, it looks like number, number six. Number eight looks number eight, like Miles, Miles Chris. Chris. Yep. So he's got a little hobble. Maybe it was just a cramp. Maybe Hopefully. he's just trying to make sure it's rubbed out pretty good. I don't think he took a bad hit yeah. or anything like that, but he was a young man who had the last catch reception going over to the sideline. That's line right, there. that long reception there. And he's been active tonight. So it's it's a warm night outside. The, 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 the temperature's in the 60s. Like I said, the rain is falling, but it's not cold by any means. So first and ten, oh, excuse me, second. We've actually uh, second and about four. Hommel's going to go for it all in the end zone. He's got a wide receiver, and he's caught it for the touchdown. Number 15, Jalen Smith. Yep, and I believe that's Jalen Smith's second touchdown. It is, of this uh, quarter. tonight. Yep, and so Hommel has four touchdowns tonight, two coming by way of feet and two coming by way of the air. It was about a 16-yard touchdown pass yep so old Hummel's looking like Tom Brady in his heyday hey you gonna bring up Tom Brady <laughs> is well, that I, what we're doing I, I said his heyday doing? I did say his heyday we doing that here now <laughs> <laughs> so the Cougars have opened up a 26 to 0 lead and you know some of these kids that were here before sophomores and juniors that are seniors now would love nothing more Ooh, and that, that extra point is blocked and that one is blocked <laughs> there was nothing with, with but passion. white jerseys coming up the middle uh, so there was a letdown up the middle. Not sure what happened to the Cougars' line there, but they were unable to protect and let the kick get a, the extra point off. Now the uh, so the score will remain twenty six to zero, one twenty two to go in the half. And I was, what I was saying before that point was blocked. You know that some of these seniors on this team that played last year remember those two games against Metrolina, especially the forty one to fourteen playoff loss that ended their season mm -hmm. so I would imagine they would love nothing more than to hang a shutout on Metrolina now granted Rod there's a whole half of football to go Metrolina's no slash themselves but uh so far from what we've seen High Point Christian's been the, the the more prepared team hardly any kind of penalties no turnovers by this team so far and uh that's why they're up 26 to zero they really have and they look good they look like they're prepared and uh you know, it could be some jitter still on Metrolina's side of the ball, or just perhaps they just, you know, don't have the same talent that they had last year. Uh, but regardless, you know, this is going to be a good game. It's football time. It's football season. And the main thing is I just hope that the kids remain safe while they're out there playing. Now, that we won't be on next week because uh, High Point Christian has a road game at Hickory Christian. We'll be back October the 9th uh, here. No, excuse me, not October 9th. They're on the road again at Christ School. We'll be back here in two weeks. Really, three weeks. October 16th versus Covenant Day. Ball has been kicked off. Nice return back up to the 
Warriors 35 yard line, and that's where the Warriors will begin this drive as they begin to uh, see what they can get down the field and get some points in a minute and 14 seconds. Yep, and they've got pretty good field position, so you know they're not starting deep, deep in their own territory. But like you said, there's a minute 14. They do have a quarterback that can chuck it down the field, and he has a couple of wide receivers that can catch it. So let's see what Metrolina tries to do with this possession here right before halftime. See if they might. Uh, it is raining. I'm not sure how well the kicking game is for Metrolina, so I'm not sure if they can. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what their field goal range is, but you'd think they would have to get at least to probably about the 20-yard line uh, for a 40-yarder. Yeah, I would definitely think so. Um, McAvoy, ooh, that, that one was almost ugh. picked off. <laughs> it went through a couple of hands, Cougars and Warriors, before it hit the ground. It did. It did. The uh, Warriors were definitely trying to get to the outside. I think they were just trying to pick up a few yards, maybe get to the out-of-bounds mark and regroup there. But the Cougars had other plans on that play. So we'll see what Metrolina comes up with now. The clock is stopped due to the incomplete pass. And we'll see what they try and do just before halftime. I know they want to score because they will have an opportunity to score again coming out of the half because they get the ball in the second half. Shotgun snap again to McAvoy, and he's going to hand off to his running back who gets stopped right at the line by number 34, Chase Cox, one of the captains, one of those Cox twins uh, playing linebacker, middle linebacker. Imagine having... Chase and Colby both playing middle linebacker in this 3-4 uh, defense that uh, the Cougars are running. Both seniors, both 6-1, both 220. Cox did a great job of filling the gap on that one. He came on down, and he read the block, and he snuck in behind the guard, and he just took him right on down for a minimal gain. Looks like he only picked up one yard on that. 34 seconds to go here in the half. See if Metrolina can get another playoff here. Uh, trips to the left, one wide receiver to the right. Shotgun formation to McElvoy. He's got a man downfield, and that pass is broken up. No flags as the rain starts coming down a little bit harder here in High Point. Yep, and that was pretty tight coverage by number 26, I believe it was, Ashton Parker. He was right on top of the wide receiver, so that ball could have gone either way, but he did knock it down. So we're looking at a fourth down for the Warriors, and they're, they're bringing punt. out their punting unit. The rain is falling here. In High Point, we're at High Point Athletic Park, home of the High Point Christian Academy Cougars. They are currently leading Metrolina Christian Academy 26-0 on our Friday night high school football game of the week. And, Rod, uh, it's so great to just be back. I know we're missing one more element, and that's the fans. But this is great to be back to be able to do what we love doing. That's calling football here in the triad. Oh, definitely. There is no other feeling. There is no better place to be. And looks like Jalen... Smith is just going to let that ball bounce and roll and take a little extra time off the clock. It wouldn't surprise me if the Cougars come out and just down the ball with only 4.1 seconds left to play in the half. Yeah, I would imagine with the rain falling and everything else, holding on to a 26-point lead that uh, they may be content to go to the locker room. Yeah, it's not a bad way to go in at halftime, being up 26 to nothing. And the Cougars, you know, they've had their way. But, Des, I have a question. What kind of halftime adjustments do you make if you're the Cougars when you have had such a great half? Stay in the course, really. Uh, sometimes I've heard that, uh, you know, whenever a team's playing well, the coaches have that same worry. What do I tell the team? They don't tell them anything. <laughs> they just they <laughs> let them go in. They rest up, get some uh, some water and some orange slices or whatever, and let them go back there keep doing what they're doing. And it doesn't look like they're going to down this ball. They're going to try to – oh, now they are going to down. They were in shotgun formation like they're going to do something. That's going to end the first half. So we're at the end of the first half here on a wet, rainy, but opening season opening Friday night in High Point. The only game in the triad, High Point Christian leading 26-0 over Metrolina Christian Academy. We're going to take a break, come right back for the halftime show. You're listening to the Friday Night High School Football Game of the Week on Tobacco Road Sports Radio, brought to you by Beamer Tire and Auto and the Pipe and Pint. Beamer Tire and Auto Repair, now with three locations across the triad in High Point, Greensboro, and our new location in Kernersville. Beamer Tire and Auto offers full service auto repair, all tire brands, free alignment checks, oil changes, and more. In Kernersville, check out the no appointment needed quick lube shop. Check out their thousands of five star ratings via Google and Yelp. They care because they know that you can go anywhere. So try a shop with a beating heart, not a bottom line. Beamer Tire and auto repair. Visit us on Facebook or at BeamerTire.com. 
Welcome to the Pipe and Pint, the oldest tobacco and specialty store in the triad of North Carolina. Come check out the largest selection of cigars and pipes in the entire triad. Rare tobacco, accessories, complemented by the best curated selection of wine and craft beer in the area. Visit our High Point location at 3025 North Main Street in High Point or call 336 858 5298. Must be 21 to enter. Proud sponsor of Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Visit the Pipe and Pint today. The specials never stop at Blue Naples Pizza, an Italian restaurant. Every day you get a large two topping pizza for only $11.99. On Sunday, watch football and enjoy our large one-topping pizza and 10 wings for only $17.99. Plus lunch specials every day of the week. Blue Naples Pizza and Italian Restaurant, 1519 Union Cross Road in Kernersville. Hey guys, it's Desmond Johnson, and I want to tell you about Retro King, the number one sneaker boutique in the triad. Buy, sell, and trade large selection of new and pre-owned sneakers. Latest popular releases like Jordan, Nike Air Max, Air Force One, SB Dunk, Bone Off-White, Adidas, Yeezy, including apparel by Supreme, Bait, Cause, Champion, and much, much more. And the best prices in the triad. Stop by today and check out their vast inventory selection, conveniently located at 1531 Haynes Mall Boulevard in Winston-Salem, beside Cookout, across the street from Walmart. Monday through Thursday, 11.30 to 6.30, Friday and Saturday, 11.30 to 7.30, and Sunday, 12 to 5. Give them a call, 336-999-7000. Follow them on Instagram, at underscore retro underscore king. That's at underscore retro underscore king. Always look your best. Shop Retro King, the cleanest new and pre-owned shoes around, period. When I pull the pin out I'm deadly when I pull the pin out And welcome back to High Point Athletic Complex as we are in halftime here. Desmond Johnson, Rod Funderburg here with you. The Tobacco Road Sports Radio High School Football Game of the Week. Didn't think we are going to get a chance to say that until February, but here we are. High Point Christian taking on Metrolina Christian Academy, Rod, and the Cougars, what, a 26-0 to point, uh, point lead right now. Luke Hommel has had his fingerprints all over this ball game. Luke Hommel has done a wonderful job, and I even like that name. Luke Hommel? Yeah, I love that name, Luke Hommel. That is a college name. <laughs> I mean, just listen to it. Is, it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Starting uh, freshman quarterback, Luke Hommel. He, he has four touchdowns, two by way of the ground, two by way of the air. I mean, that is the making of a quarterback who's going to be playing on Saturdays. But he has had a wonderful first half. And I know he's going in. He's going to talk to the offensive coordinator, figure out what he may have done a little bit off or wrong in the first half and see if he can correct those and, have an even better second half. So we'll see what happens. So score and rundown here. Four touchdowns by the Cougars here in the first half. 10-23 to go. Really less than two minutes had gone by off the clock where uh, Luke Hommel, the quarterback for the Cougars, scampered around the end for a 72-yard touchdown run, made the score 7-0. to Metrolina turned the ball over on a fumble after driving down the field. Uh, in the second quarter, Luke Hommel strikes again, a 45-yard scamper for a touchdown. Made the score 13-0. The extra point was missed. Then a little bit later on in the second quarter, Jalen Smith made his presence known. A 65-yard touchdown pass from Hommel made the score 20-0. And then with 1.22 to go left in the half, Smith again connecting with Hommel, or Hommel connecting with Smith, I should say, a 16-yard touchdown pass that made the score 26-0. to And that's where we stand currently right now. And Desmond, you know, we talk about the work that Hommel has done, the work that Jalen Smith has done, has uh, you know, as far as catching the ball and making it to the end zone. But one of the things that we overlook a lot of times is the way that that offensive line plays, the way the guys down in the trenches. Those are the guys who actually make the things happen, the good things happen. They're the ones down there fighting, blocking. They're the ones that making the correct block so that Hommel can get to the edge and score that touchdown. They're the ones making the correct pass pro block so that Hummel can have enough time and get that ball down the field to Jalen Smith. So, although we may not see it, I can tell you right now, 
Jalen Smith and Hommel, they are both giving their offensive line all kinds of praise in that locker room right now. The uh, so, Some of the names that we have been calling out here for High Point Christian are transfers uh, that came in. Southern Guilford actually lost two all-conference selections and another key piece of its offense to uh, High Point Christian. Miles Crisp, who got injured, pro- well, maybe with a cramp a little bit later on in the second quarter, uh, was all-conference last year. He's on this squad now. Jalen Smith, who has two touchdowns already in the, uh, the evening, and Jordan Wilson, uh, the other running back, was all conference as well. They reclassified to the class of 2022 and transferred to High Point Christian for their final two years of high school. And they're expected to be plugged in various spots on offense, slot back, wide receiver, and running back. And we've seen all of that already tonight, Rod, uh, from all three of those names. Yeah, we definitely have. This is a talented team. And, uh, you know, I would like to see the mixture of, of a team like this play a East Forsyth Eagle team. I think it would be a great game, regardless of the classes, regardless of it being private, public. I would love to see that matchup based upon what I'm seeing from these Cougars, the way that you can tell they've been coached properly. Same thing with the Eagles. The Eagles come out the same way the Cougars do. They come out, uh, they have the energy, they're ready to go, and you can tell that they have been coached properly by Coach Todd Willard over at East Forsyth. Mm -hmm. So here is Scott Bell. He's doing the exact same thing for the High Point Christian Academy Cougars. And I'd just love to see a matchup like that. I think it would be a great non-conference ball game. Speaking to Athletic Director uh, Corey Gassel uh, a week or so ago when we were setting up all this to get uh, some some spotlight shown on these kids at High Point Christian, I mentioned that to him. I mean, he told me that a lot of the area teams, a lot of the public schools don't want to play High Point Christian. Like, they used to play them. They'd come in, they'd lose, and they just kind of stopped scheduling them. So <laughs> a, oh, lot wow. of, a lot of the games that they play – are against other independent schools in the state of North Carolina. Mm-hmm. This schedule is a little different, though, because normally they've got teams from Charlotte peppered all across their schedule. Charlotte decided, the city of Charlotte, the independent schools in Charlotte, decided when the NCISAA decided to go forward with fall sports, including football, those schools decided they weren't going to travel outside of the charlotte Mac area. So they're all playing each other. Mm-hmm. So it made it where... They had to kind of scramble to figure out who they were going to get to fill these seven games and whatnot, but they do have a full schedule. And I was talking about it before. We'll be back on uh, about three weeks from now um, when High Point comes back home. The next two games are on the road, but we are your home for High Point Christian football. If they make the playoffs, we will follow them through the playoffs as well. So So they'll be traveling up to, is it Hickory next week um, to play there, or will they be traveling – Closer to the, one of the Charlotte teams, because I know they have some Charlotte teams on their schedule, just like Metrolina is on their schedule. Yeah, I want to it's the uh, Indian Trail area. Hickory Christian is who the next opponent is. It's at Hickory Christian October 2nd. Then they have Christ School October the 9th. Then they're back home October 16th for Covenant Day, and we'll be here for that matchup on October the 16th. Then the 23rd, they're here. We'll be here as well against Rabun Gap Nakuchi from Georgia. Oh, wow. So they're playing an out-of-state team. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love the way these guys put the, these different teams on their schedule. They're not afraid to go out of state, public, private. They'll play all comers. That is beautiful. We had broke the news uh, in the first half as it came out, uh, some news around the world of sports here before we take another break and then get back to the action here in the third quarter. Uh, the Pac-12 has decided to start football. Surprise. Um, with a November schedule, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be a seven-game schedule. So now, Rod, it's going to be – all five power conferences will be playing in some capacity by the time we get to November. And my question is, some of these teams aren't going to have full seasons in terms of uh, the games that were scheduled for them being played. We're seeing that now with uh, games being canceled this week. because yeah, like of Carolina had to Carolina cancel, had to game cancel a game with um, Charlotte right. because of the kids having coronavirus. Notre Dame is not able to play Wake Forest yep. uh, due again to coronavirus. And all of this is new. For everyone and um, you know it's just sad that we have to go through this uh, and we're all going through it together mm-hmm. you know no one's in it alone uh, but we don't know what's going to happen and, and I know you have that question but my question also in addition to that is let's say the season goes well for the Pac-10 and all the different schools out there is it right if the Pac-10 is because to me they would be a little more fresher whenever it's time to get into the playoffs Maybe. You, know, you know, are they going to be more healthier? Because if I've been play, if I started my season in September and you're not starting your season till November, and that means I have three, four, almost six weeks to have injuries that you may not have. But my question is, like for the 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 the, 
the conferences have started earlier, so they're going to have more games, like the ACC. Would you take a 10-1 and one Carolina team? or would, Well, they're not going to play 11 games. Would you take a 9-1 Carolina team, or are you going to take a 6-0 and Ohio State team or a 6-0 and USC team? You know, like That's going to be the problem tricky. at the end of the mm-hmm. year because not all these teams aren't all playing 11, 12 games. Some of them are only going to play – I think the, the MAC is talking about doing a six-game schedule possibly if they come back. Mm-hmm. Um, and really, honestly, to me, it kind of feels like – the Pac-12 got pressured into it because all the other Power 5 conferences are going to be playing. So it's like, mm-hmm. well, if they're all playing, why aren't we playing? So that seems what the issue is going to be there going forward. Yeah, and, you know, it, could it be an, another reason that they're doing this too, which could, pos- which co- could possibly be the almighty dollar? You know, that's teams, it. teams, <laughs> that's teams what it is. lose a little bit of money when they're not out there playing, believe it or not. Yeah. Because these guys generate some serious revenue, especially when you're talking about that media TV dollars. And, s- and some of that, uh, some of these schools, we've come to find out in this uh, COVID-19 world, they need that football money just to right. survive as a school in terms right. of uh, budgeting other things. So, But then it brings up the other topic. You can't have a full gate. So, I mean, you're talking about bringing that money in. How where are you getting that money? Because you still can't have full capacity. Now, I did see that this is outside of college, but uh, with Governor Cooper's announcement this week, the Carolina Panthers, among other places, eventually are going to be allowed to have. It might have just been the Panthers that he announced. I don't think he announced it for other. I thought he areas. said North Carolina, so North the Carolina. Tar Heels could do it too. They could, in theory, do it here if they really yeah. wanted to. Yeah. It but would be, I think, seven percent. Seven percent capacity. So I'm not sure how many people uh, can be seated in High Point Athletic Park. You're probably talking about. I don't know, maybe a couple hundred. Yeah, probably. but I think he could have done ten percent instead of seven. I'm wondering why, I wonder why seven. They did I, seven. I wonder yeah. how he came up with that number. So it's only going to be uh, Bank of America Stadium holds about sixty-eight, sixty-nine thousand. So you're talking about f- uh, about five thousand, fifty-two hundred people right. in the stands. And if they do it the way um, I saw, it might have been a Dallas home game a couple weeks ago, like opening week, where it's almost like a checkerboard where you'll get to sit with the people you came with. So say you say you and three friends went to a Panthers game. They'll sit you and those two friends kind of in a square. Mm-hmm. There won't be anybody behind you, anybody in front of you, or anybody beside you for at least six or seven seats. Mm-hmm. And then if you're looking at it on TV, it's just like a patchwork checkerboard of, like, fans. But any fans are better than no fans. So we'll see, you know, how that's going to go. Oh, definitely. And, then of course, the fans, you know, to me, they do help and affect the game. You know, that they bring another energy that you just can't generate without having fans there. And I hate to see it that there's not any fans there because number one fans love the game yeah and number two the players they love knowing those fans are back there they love knowing when they make a great play they've got someone cheering rah rah on them on there's no other feeling like it so if you're looking for sports talk like this it's triad sports talk actual triad sports talk and not regional or national sports talk tobacco road sports radio has you covered every saturday morning check out the new sports talk shows discussing what you want to hear panthers hornets nascar high school sports acc and much much more shows like the pregame with brian snow final uh fantasy football come true with rod funderburk the score with brett wiseman and of course the rundown with desmond johnson tune in every saturday morning starting at 9 30 a.m and get your sports weekend started off on the right foot at tobacco road sports radio.com let's take a quick break we'll be right back to start the third quarter you're listening to friday night football the high school game of the week here on Tobacco Road Sports Radio, exclusively on Facebook Watch. Beamer Tire and Auto Repair, now with three locations across the triad in High Point, Greensboro, and our new location in Kernersville. Beamer Tire and Auto offers full-service auto repair, all tire brands, free alignment checks, oil changes, and more. In Kernersville, check out the no-appointment-needed Quick Lube Shop. Check out their thousands of five-star ratings via Google and Yelp. They care because they know that you can go anywhere. So try a shop with a beating heart, not a bottom line. Beamer Tire and auto repair. Visit us on Facebook or at BeamRetire.com. The specials never stop at Blue Naples Pizza, an Italian restaurant. Every day you get a large two-topping pizza for only $11.99. On Sunday, watch football and enjoy our large one-topping pizza and 10 wings for only $17.99. Plus lunch specials every day of the week. Blue Naples Pizza, an Italian restaurant. 1519 Union Cross Road in Kernersville. Welcome back 
to the third quarter here at High Point Athletic Park. High Point Christian taking on Metrolina Christian Academy. Cougars versus Warriors, and that kick is up in the air as the Cougars kick off to Metrolina. Ball is fielded. Runners coming up the field past the 30. Good run here. Runs into some defenders, and he's going to be brought down out of bounds right around the, the Warriors' 36-yard line. Definitely, and I'm not sure if the returner had a stiff stern talking to him in the locker room, but he definitely came out as if there is a state of urgency for sure for the Warriors. And being down 26 to nothing, they know they've got to get it started and they've got to get it going now. This is going to be a very important first drive for the Warriors. Let's see if they can make anything happen against this Cougar defense. Yeah, Metrolina needs to giddy up here down 26 to zero to start off the third quarter. Desmond Johnson and Rod Funderburg here with you on the call. It's Tobacco Road Sports Radio's High School Football Game of the Week featuring High Point Christian Academy. First down run for good yardage. Actually runs into the first down marker. Looks like they're going to get that first down. And the ball's going to be placed right around the Warriors' 44-yard line. They do get the first down. The chains do move. Yep, that is a first down. Metrolina definitely needed that. And let's see if they can make something happen here against this Cougar defense. For they need it. Being down 26 to nothing, you just have this feeling that you have got to score and put points on the board to give your team a chance to come back and win this ball game. Snap on first and 10. McAvoy drops back. He's going to boot like to the left and just run it out of bounds after a game of about four. I thought maybe he would have tried to hit his receiver. He had a receiver that was wide open, number tw 12 for um, – the quarterback had someone wide open right there in the flats where he could have dumped it and easily picked up about six or seven yards on that play. Got to wonder if maybe the uh, the elements might have had a little bit to do with that. He was rolling to his left. I don't think he's a left-handed thrower, so I'm not sure how easy it would have been for him to throw it kind of across his body to, uh, to the receiver there on that sideline like you were talking there. Second and 10 for the Warriors, down 26-0. Another pass by McAvoy out in the flat, but his wide receiver drops it, trying to turn around to turn up field. Yeah, he may have heard some footsteps coming from Jalen Smith there. I think uh, Jalen was trying to come up, and he was going to make a good hit on him. He had a good run and start at the receiver. Sometimes hearing those footsteps will make you think twice about catching that football. That was Caleb Titherington, wide receiver, junior 5'10", wide receiver for Metrolina. It's going to set up a third down, crucial third down there for Metrolina, trying desperately to... Get some kind of mojo going here against this defense from High Point Christian. Ball snap. McAvoy's going to look around. Has a receiver. Got the mm -hmm. first down. Gain of about 12 yards. Yeah, I believe the coach may have seen the same thing that I saw on that play because that's the exact same play that he just bootlegged and ran, and he hit the exact same receiver that was open down there. And, of course, they were able to pick up the first down. Brian Kearns, number 88. Tall senior, 6'2", 185 wide receiver. like the size on that kid there. Yeah, he's a good-looking kid. Uh, but he, if he keeps going the way he's going, he should have a pretty good season this year. And I have to apologize to the Warriors fans. I've been pronouncing their name wrong. It's Metrolina, like Carolina. Oh, Metrolina. Yeah, not Metrolina. I did not know that. No, no, no one corrected me in the box. Not a single person. Everyone just let me keep going. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, okay. <laughs> I think that might be because they're Cougar fans. <laughs> That's what it is. They're a little biased. <laughs> Had someone message us on Facebook to let me know that. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, Metrolina is now over the 50-yard line. Yep, well, they're going to be at the 50-yard line because going back. Metrolina just had a delay of game penalty on them. Shout out to Autumn Moen who uh, messaged us to let us know that we were pronouncing the name wrong. We we greatly apologize, Autumn. We hope you forgive us. Thank you, Autumn. Keep us straight over yeah, here. Yeah, keep us straight. We're wild over here. We we didn't know any better. And hopefully it won't be soon before fans like you can get back involved in the little high school football. Susie, the same way. We got you. Metrolina. Metrolina gets stuck on first and ten for a loss of four yards. Yeah, the Cougar defense was all over the Metrolina running back there. So they're going backwards here. It's second down for the Warriors. This replay of this matchup will be on TobaccoRoadSportsRadio.com tomorrow starting at 5 o'clock p.m. For those that were expecting this game to be on actually Friday night, we will replay this on the actual station player 
at TobaccoRoadSportsRadio.com. Go and like it on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at Tobacco Radio. Uh, we're also on Instagram under Tobacco Road Sports Radio as well. So definitely follow us for the latest updates on programming, shows, games, everything you need to know in the triad here. Yep, and looks like there is going to be a timeout taken by the Metrolina Warriors, and they're going to talk things over. So we're going to take a quick break, too, uh, pay some sponsors, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Friday Night Football Game of the Week on Tobacco Road Sports Radio. High Point Christian taking on the Metrolina Christian Academy Warriors. Welcome to the Pipe and Pint, the oldest tobacco and specialty store in the triad of North Carolina. Come check out the largest selection of cigars and pipes in the entire triad. Rare tobacco, accessories, complemented by the best curated selection of wine and craft beer in the area. Visit our High Point location at 3025 North Main Street in High Point or call 336 336- 858-5298. Must be 21 to enter. Proud sponsor of Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Visit the Pipe and Pint today. Welcome back to High Point Athletic Park. Desmond Johnson, Rod Funderburg here with you as Metrolina lacks back on second down. Pass complete. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Wide receiver goes past his defender, gets the first down, dragged out of bounds. Great Pick up there. That was awesome. That was number 11, uh, Caleb Titherington. I think I'm saying that name right. Caleb Titherington. He, made he was a wide receiver. He's a junior, 5'10", 155 pounds, and he showed a little speed and strength picking up that first down down the Metrolina sideline. All the way into Warriors territory now. Uh, excuse me, not Warriors, uh, Cougars territory down on the Cougars 30. First and 10 for the Warriors. McAvoy sets up in shotgun formation, has a running back and pistol to his right. He's going to hand off to him. That's Luke Gaskins, and he's going to get tackled by about three Cougars right around the first down marker on the far sideline. That's going to bring up a second down with 8.23 to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, he would have lost some yardage on that play had it not been for the left tackle stand with his block. That defensive end was right there to make a tackle, but the left tackle, offensive tackle, he did not let up. And he at least allowed him to get back close to the line of scrimmage to bring up a second and long. So second and about it's like about 12 for Metrolina as they try to get some points on the board. They are being blanked right now, 26 to zero by High Point Christian. Yep, and they come out uh, with two wide receivers on the slot to the right. They're going to hand it off here to number two, Joe Dilly who picks up some positive yardage, a gain of about six. Yep, and you can hear the defensive coaches down here for the Cougars saying, hey, you got to wrap these guys up because it looks like the Metrolina, Metrolina, excuse me, looks like the Metrolina Warriors are slipping some tackles there. So you hear the Cougars coaches saying, hey, wrap these guys up and bring them down to the ground. Joe Dilley pays running back off, uh, outside linebacker and middle linebacker. Good size on him. He's a senior, 6'1", 190. And ran through that hole like a... Like a Tall statue basically picked up some positive yards. Metrolina is trying to get something going here. I and mean, they have three receivers to the right side. So let's trips, see if they come this way. Trips to the right, one to the left. McAvoy's going to throw it into the end zone. He's got a wide receiver. Good coverage, no flag. Yeah, it looks like the ball was just short. And sometimes you want to, at least if you've got a tall wide receiver, you want to give him a fighting chance to try and go after the ball there. And that looks like the pass was intended for number 15, Tommy Miller, who's a junior wide receiver. He's standing just right at six feet tall. So you want to give him a shot at the ball and not short it in there to him. Make sure you go to YouTube and subscribe to the Sports Carolina Monthly YouTube channel. You'll be able to stream future High Point Christian Academy games there as well as Blue Chip High School Fall Basketball League every Saturday from now through Halloween starting at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Fourth down, Metrolina's going for it. They catch it in the end zone. That's a touchdown. If he was in bounds. They're it looks like the referee was. is saying he was in bounds. And that will be a touchdown. It was about a 25-yard like strike there from so Ryan McAvoy, the quarterback. So Metrolina does score on their first possession coming out of halftime. And that was something that they desperately needed. 
And sometimes, you know, you go into halftime, you make those halftime adjustments. You see what the defense is doing to you. You see the mistakes that you've made, and then you make those corrections. And it looks like the Warriors have made the correct adjustments, at least on this first drive. So let's see if the Cougars can answer. Look, like that was Tetherington, number 11, with the catch, the 5'10 junior. I believe it was. Caleb and Tetherington gets on the board here. And it looks like number 14, Bryce McPherson, is coming out for the extra point. He's 6'1", 174 pounds. And the extra point kick is good. It's going to make the score 26-7. to seven. So Brian McPherson gives him the extra point. And the Cougars will soon be receiving the ball to see if they can come down and answer that score by the Metro Lina Christian Academy Warriors. Beam Retire and Auto Repair Center is now in three locations across the triad. Greensboro, High Point, and their new location in Kernersville. Stop by for full-service car repair, oil changes, tires, and more. Beam Retire and Auto, we care because we know you could go anywhere. A shop with a beating heart, not a bottom line. Just took my wife's Honda over there and got it inspected earlier this week. Was in and out in about 10 minutes. So definitely go and check out Beamer Tire and Auto Repair. Doug Beamer and the fine folks over at Beamer taking care of cars here in the triad. So Metrolina is on the board. 26 to 7, 6.59 to go. Plenty of time in this game, uh, Rod. Only down 19 points. Maybe felt like more uh, as they were scoreless up to this point. But now we get to see if Metrolina can actually hold this uh, high point Christian offense. Get it? Maybe they, they could use a three and out, a turnover, something right now, just to change the momentum of this game even further in their favor. Metrolina with the kick, and that's going to be a touchback. Yep, and that one went right through the end zone. So the Cougars are going to start on their own twenty. It feels like they haven't had the ball on offense in forever. Yeah, not since the first half, for yeah. sure. So, Metro, Metro, uh, Metrolina actually had that ball the entire third quarter. 6.59 showing on the, uh, the shot clock, right or the scoreboard right now, I should say. I'm getting my sports. There's too many sports going on right now, Rod. I'm sorry. There's too many sports. Too many <laughs> sports. I never thought a sports guy would ever say almost, such a thing. Almost called that touchdown a home run a minute ago. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> 26 to 7 is your score. High Point Christian comes out on offense. Luke Hommel, quarterback, in shotgun formation. He's got his running back, Jordan Wilson, Southern Guilford transfer, lined up behind him. He's going to hand off to Wilson. He's going to get behind that offensive line and keep turning those legs, pick up about four. And that's a good safe play by the Cougars there. You know, you want to get your offense back in rhythm. You want the offensive line to establish dominance, just as they did in the first half. And there's no better way to establish dominance and to come out with your first play being a running play, and you pick up five yards with a good, strong runner uh, in the backfield. So we'll see how the Cougars continue to improve and move on this drive. I want to thank everyone that's listening in to us on uh, this exclusive coverage on Facebook. Watch Tobacco Road Sports Radio presents high school football, the only game in the triad right now. High Point Christian taking on uh, Metrolina Christian Academy. Warriors versus the Cougars. Both teams 0-0. It's their first game of the year. Yep, looks like we've got a penalty. Looks like it's going to be a false start on the Cougars. So that's going to back the Cougars up five yards. So it'll be second and 15. Ball on the Cougar 15. Well, this will drive a coach crazy, getting penalties. False start penalties, those are just mental errors. You know, football is physical enough, but when you start throwing in the mental mistakes, that will drive a coach batty every time. Second and 15. Hommels takes the snap, hands off to Wilson again. He's got a nice hole up the middle. He's going to get some of those yards back. He's going to make it for a more manageable third down. Gets up to around the 28-yard line. Yeah, that was a pretty good run, Uh by Jordan Wilson there. I'll tell you what, I know number 55, Glenn Bullock. He's a junior offensive lineman. He's 6'2", 245 pounds. I don't think he knew the ball was coming his way because he didn't start blocking until he saw Wilson get a little closer to him. But Wilson cut it off to the left and forced him back into some action over there. But that was a pretty good run by the running back there, the junior running back, Jordan Wilson. 
So we'll see what we'll see what the Cougars do here. Holding on to a 26 to 7 lead. And I think we're going to get a timeout here. High Point Christian wants to talk this over. So we'll take a 30 second timeout here as well. We'll be back in just a minute. Friday night high school football, Tobacco Road Sports Radio, brought to you by Beamer Tire and Auto and the Pipe and Pint. The Pipe and Pint, the oldest tobacco and specialty store in the triad of North Carolina. Come check out the largest selection of cigars and pipes in the entire triad. Rare tobacco, accessories, complemented by the best curated selection of wine and craft beer in the area. Visit our High Point location at 3025 North Main Street in High Point or call 336-858-5298. Must be 21 to enter. Proud sponsor of Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Visit the Pipe and Pint today. Beamer Tire and Auto Repair. Now with three locations across the triad in High Point, Greensboro, and our new location in Kernersville. Beamer Tire and Auto offers full service auto repair. All tire brands, free alignment checks, oil changes, and more. In Kernersville, check out the no appointment needed quick lube shop. Check out their thousands of five star ratings via Google and Yelp. They care because they know that you can go anywhere. So try a shop with a beating heart, not a bottom line. Beamer Tire and auto repair. Visit us on Facebook or at BeamRetire.com. Welcome back to High Point Athletic Park. Desmond Johnson, Rod Funderburg in the house with you. High Point Christian 26, Metrolina 7, 5.07 to go here in the third quarter. Uh, a, p a false start penalty on High Point Christian makes it third down with about eight to go. Hommel drops back and shotgun to pass. He's going to run to his right-hand side. He's got a man down the field, open, caught. Did he hang on to it? I think he did. That was caught by his junior wide receiver, Jalen Smith. He did. Who's been all over the place all night. Jalen has two touchdowns already. Another uh, Southern Guilford transfer making his presence known. And we're moving all the way down here to the other side of the field. See where they're marking this ball here. A, a bomb on court by Hommel. Yep, they should be marking it close to about the 40, oh, excuse me, the 38-yard line. Yeah, so like. we're all the way down to the, the Warriors 38 after that. About a 45-yard bomb down the field by Luke Hommel to uh, Jalen Smith. And Jalen Smith seems to be Luke Hommel's go-to guy, his go-to receiver. Why Whenever not? he yeah. needs a big play, <laughs> that's who he's been going to. And I tell you, Jalen Smith has been delivering each time. I believe he was all-conference last year playing for Southern Guilford. First and 10 for the Cougars. Handoff here to number eight, Miles Crisp, yet another one of those transfers. And he uh, motors his way up close to another first down. And they're getting close to the red zone here. And that was a good play call there. It looked like the tight end came around and blocked the end. And uh, the running back, Miles Crisp, was able to just cut it up and uh, pick up a first down and keep those chains moving. And they're continuing to keep the Warriors off of the field, at least the offense anyway. And it looks like they're tiring that defense out. I see some hands on their hips out there on that defense, and that's always a sign that they're getting a little winded. I was going to say, they didn't play. The most of the third quarter, the offense was out there for Metrolina, but snap on first down here again. But this one's going to get stuffed as they tried to make it. They tried to turn the corner on the right hand side and just couldn't get there. It looks like it was, uh, I believe it was Sean O'Brien on that run for High Point Christian. Yep, and Metrolina did a great job of making sure that outside containment was kept. The running back was unable to get to the outside. And in doing so, when he cut it back up, there was all the help for the Metrolina Warriors that was able to stop him for a minimum one, one-and-a-half yard gain. So second and about nine for High Point Christian, threatening to put some more points on the board here, dangerously close to the red zone again. Metrolina trying to hold on here to get the ball back to their offense. And they're back in that pistol formation with motion right now. Hommel, high snap, goes over his head, has to fall on it. It's going to give him some negative yards here. Yep, and looks like they lost quite a bit of yards on that play. They did. They did. And, and you know, you hate to see plays like that as a head coach because you have no idea if your guy's going to be able to jump on it when that snap is mishandled and it goes over your head or if one of the defensive players is going to come and jump on that ball before your quarterback can get to it. But luckily, the Cougars, Hommel, was able to get on the ball before the defense could get over there and take it away. So third down, 
About third and 16. Hommel gets the snap. He's going to try to go deep. He's got a man open. Caught down at the 10. That's going to be a first down. Out of bounds. That's number seven. Jackson Clark. So Hommel spreading the wealth around to his wide receivers and uh, running backs tonight. And Dez, that was an excellent job by the offensive line. There was no one even close to Hommel putting any pressure on him. As a matter of fact, he had an opportunity to dance a little bit like Muhammad Ali <laughs> as he was back there. He bounced a I little bit. I saw the footwork. I saw what he was doing. And then, he, there, then he released it, and it was a beautiful pass. So Hommel's played fantastic. He uh, missed about five games last year with a lingering ankle injury. Looks like he's been ready to go for months uh, as he's been out here doing his thing. And High Point Christian's threatening to get on the scoreboard again. Snap to Hommel. And that is a false start. Yeah. It looks like the right tackle moved very early. Uh, number 56, I believe it was, or number 58. He's a junior, Cameron Tenen. That's not when you want to have your name called whenever you have a penalty. But he's about 6'2", 260 pounds. So he's another big boy on that offensive line whose parents have a heck of a grocery bill, I'm sure. <laughs> 148 to go here in the third quarter. 26 to 7 is your score. High Point Christian leading Metrolina. We'll and be and who ahead. knows, Des, whenever you're close to the goal line like this, sometimes those penalties help you out. Although you move backwards, a little bit more it space. gives you a little bit more space to yeah. work with on the field. You're exactly right. So Hamel does have a little bit more room to look. It's first and goal about the 15 yard line. Hamel misses a. Sack's going to evade one defender. Good block pickup on the left-hand side. He gets around the corner, picks up some positive yardage. You know, Des, that was a good block, but I actually expected a flag on that block because it was one of those deals, almost like a, a crackback, where you mm. the, 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 the guy receiving the block did not see the blocker coming to get him. And as you know, that penalty is called quite often in the NFL. Whoops. They uh, might have got one through there, so... <laughs> With it being 50, less than a minute to go in the third quarter. See if uh, High Point can get another playoff here before we go to the fourth. Good game. High Point Christian's been very effective in this game so far. High Point Christian is doing their offensive thing for sure. Very polished offense. Second down. Hommel tries to catch the guy in the end zone. And it's intercepted. Metroline is running up the sideline all the way up to the 50. They might be taking this all the way back. Jordan Wilson's going to be the only one that can catch him. And he does bring him down. But he's a 70-yard interception by number 11, Caleb Titherington. That was a good job. That was great. Great job by the defense. And I tell you what, Hal waited just a little bit long to throw that ball. Had he thrown the ball earlier, he would have thrown his receiver open. But what he did is he waited until his receiver cut and threw the ball. By that time, the defense was already breaking on the ball. Oh, there's a... Looks like there's a penalty. Yeah, I think there's a penalty, but I believe it's going to be on um, Metro Lana, but after the turnover. I don't I believe know. There's going to be a block in the back. Let's see here because the Cougars are kind of standing back where the original line of scrimmage was. Look at see what the call is here. Nope, it's against the Cougars. They had a legal man downfield. So that penalty is uh, waived. Yep, Metro, First down, Metrolina. Me yeah, Metrolina doesn't want that penalty. Yeah, They'll take the play every time. So here's the setup for you going into the fourth quarter. It's 26.8 seconds to go in the third. Metrolina just intercepted a ball off of the – probably about the – well, they started at the 15-yard line. Luke Hommel tried to get a uh, wide receiver that was open in the end zone for a split second. Read well by Caleb Titherington for Metrolina, and he ran the ball all the way back down to the Cougars' 29-yard line. So now it's first and 10 for the Warriors. Yep, and they have a short field to work with. Hand off to Joe Dilly. He's still on his feet. And he's going to get close to a first down on that run. Yeah, and Joe Dilly was kind of hiding behind the offensive lineman there. Oh, he, he did was, get it. He was able to pick up 10 yards and, and get that first down. So the first down for the Warriors. Great field position here. You think that they got to cash in on this uh, turnover. The only turnover of the night for the Cougars. Dilly again with a run up the middle going towards the left. He's brought down again closer to the 10-yard the line. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. Yep, and Metro Lana Warriors have definitely owned this particular third quarter here. 
It has not been a good quarter for the Cougars. Let's take a quick break, come back, fourth quarter, see who's going to end this thing and come out of the first uh, week of the season with a, with a W. High Point Christian 26, Metrolina 6, or excuse me, 7, but threatening. We'll be back right after this. Hey guys, it's Desmond Johnson, and I want to tell you about Retro King, the number one sneaker boutique in the triad. Buy, sell, and trade large selection of new and pre-owned sneakers. Latest popular releases like Jordan, Nike Air Max, Air Force One, SB Dunk, Bone Off-White, Adidas, Yeezy, including apparel by Supreme, Bait, Cause, Champion, and much, much more. And the best prices in the triad. Stop by today and check out their vast inventory selection, conveniently located at 1531 Haynes Mall Boulevard in Winston-Salem, beside Cookout, across the street from Walmart, Monday through Thursday, 11.30 to 6.30, Friday and Saturday, 11.30 to 7.30, and Sunday, 12 to 5. Give them a call, 336-999-7000. Follow them on Instagram, at underscore retro underscore king. That's at underscore retro underscore king. Always look your best. Shop Retro King, the cleanest new and pre-owned shoes around, period. Athletic Park, Desmond Johnson, Rod Funderburg in the house with you. Tobacco Road Sports Radio proudly presents Friday night football, high school football in the triad. High Point Christian taking on Metrolina Christian Academy. Metrolina threatening the score here down 26 to 7 uh, as we enter the final 12 minute period of the contest. It's going to be second down here for Metrolina. Handoff to Dilly. He's going to run through the hole and he's in for a score. And just like that, Rod, we got a, t a close one brewing here. Oh, yeah. Dilly just snuck in behind that offensive line. He got in behind big number 70 there who just opened up a nice little hole. That's Andrew Threat. He's a senior who's 6'4", 255 pounds, and he looked really good on that particular blocking scheme there. And he also was in behind Alex Green, who was also another senior standing at 6 feet, 250 pounds. A 10-yard run by Dilly going to make the score here waiting on the extra point thought uh yep and the Warriors are doing a little bit of razzle dazzle they were. just trying to catch the Cougars little. off guard but the Cougars were set for that extra point attempt a little old school uh like 1890s Michigan Wolverine mm -hmm. type setup there again but then they get the regular formation and kick the extra point and it's good so 26 to 14 is your score 12 uh, point advantage Looks like this is shaping up into a good game. Definitely the Cougars controlled the first half, but as of now, the Metrolina Warriors are controlling the second half. So as the Cougars prepare to receive the ball, let's see what Coach Bell dials up on this next drive here. And I tell you, Dez, we uh, got a pretty good football weekend coming up as well, too. We do. I'm worried about my Panthers a little bit. They're... They're, they're very thin uh, everywhere, it feels like, and very young. And yeah, they, se they seem to want to try to lose games by themselves. So let's see what happens week three. Um. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot <laughs> of people who are a little worried about the Panthers right now. You know, it's um, But whenever you change regimes, you know, you get rid of your head coach who's a defensive guy and your new coach coming in is more of an offensive guy and they let some players go off the defense. They don't have the defensive backs or secondary that they truly need. Got young guys back there. Probably one of the youngest defenses in the NFL if they're not the youngest. Yeah. Um, so there's going to be some growing pains. I think their there's average age is like 25, 26. They're like okay. the second or third youngest uh, team in the entire league. So we kind of knew this was going to happen, but it's still just kind of hard to watch them lose games they should have won. They probably should have beat Tampa uh, last uh, Sunday. I feel like they should have beat the Raiders in the first game. I think so they should have done that got too. Got an onside kick here. Metrolina tried the onside kick, but the Cougars did recover it at about the 45-yard line. Speaking of onside kicks, I'm sure you've been waiting all night to talk about your boys and the uh, ineptitude of the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, how often is it when a team doesn't know that they can jump on a ball as soon as it's kicked on an onside kick? Is that something that happens all the time, or is that just an Atlanta Falcons thing? <laughs> 
Well, you know, Dez, I don't really want to get into <laughs> all that stuff. All I know uh, is that uh, I was watching the game on Sunday and uh, I was having a very down time and during the first three quarters. <laughs> but I'll tell you, that fourth quarter wasn't bad. Dak Especially showed out, man. The game. He did. Pay that he man did. his money. Please, pay that man his money. Well, I mean, he's still getting $31 million. How much do you want? I think he wants 40 <laughs> I think. First when, and 10. When the Super Bowl first. Yeah, <laughs> first and 10 for the Cougars. And, uh. Jordan Wilson's going to run about 10 yards for a first down, past the 50 to the Warriors 45. Yeah, this Jordan Wilson kid is a nice guy. He gets behind that offensive line. He keeps that feet, those feet churning. And I tell you, he's off to the races. I like him. Looks like we've got a Cougar who's hobbling off the sideline. One of the linemen, number 50, is coming off for the sideline. Looks like he's a little injured. Hopefully everything is okay. 50 is Tanner Shuck. He's a sophomore, 6'3", 240 pounds. Second and 10 for High Point Christian. Hommel in shotgun has a running back to his left and right. He's going to fake it to the right and hand it to the left, who happens to be Jordan Wilson. And he's going to pick up about five yards on the carry. He's going to bring up second down. A uh, good run, Bob Wilson. That's a good blocking scheme by the offensive line. And that's what you want. You want positive yardage. He's falling forward like you want a good running back to do. You know, most running backs that are pretty decent and they play on Saturdays, they will fall forward as opposed to getting hit and falling backwards or falling to the side and continue to pick up those extra yardage there. So we got a in the fourth uh, quarter, 10.36 to go in the game, 26-14, High Point Christian leading Metrolina. Uh, High Point Christian has the ball. It is on their uh, the Warriors' 45-yard line, second and about five. Another handoff to Wilson. He finds a hole on the right-hand side and breaks it open here about 20 yards. Gets the first down. He's down all the way down to the Warriors' 22-yard line. That'll move the chains again. Well, the chains are moving again. And that's exactly what the Cougars need. So the Cougars are putting together a big drive to answer that last touchdown by the Metrolina Warriors. Which they needed because uh, the, the momentum was clearly shifting tw uh, towards Metrolina. So High Point needed something to kind of settle themselves down. And Jordan Wilson has been that settler on this, uh, on this drive. So first and 10 again. Wilson lines up behind Hommel. And they're going to ride Wilson again. He gets in the hole, but he's met by four Metrolina defenders. Pro uh, no gain, maybe a gain of one. Yeah, I think he may have picked up one yard on the play. No, actually, you're right. He didn't pick up anything on that particular play there. Uh, so that'll be a second and ten. Well, it looks like there's a flag on the play, so it looks like it's going to back up. Looks like there was a hold on the play yep, on holding. High Point Christian, so we're going to back that up five yards. You know, and, that, and that's no, something that holding should never happen on a running play. I can understand you holding on a pass play because you always want to protect your quarterback, make sure he doesn't get hurt. But your running back, he's going to take some licks. And uh, there's no need to hold on a running play. Just go ahead, block your man, stay with your man. No need to grab him, pull him down, or hold at all. So that's going to make it now first and about 15. No, about 20. First and 20 for... High point, and Hommel gets sacked in the backfield, so they're moving the wrong direction here. Third down. Yeah, it looks like Hummel was trying to get to the outside, but he slipped. Uh, of course, I'm sure the defender had something to do with that, but he did slip. It's a little wet out here. It's been a rainy night, and uh, looks like the Cougars are going to face third down and probably about, looks like, three, four miles. And... Um, <laughs> We'll see what kind of the first play call Scott Bell will draw up. On first down team. markers way down at the Cougars. Looks like 15-yard line. The ball is at the Cougars' 39-yard line. Yep, so they've got a little ways to go. They Let's do. see what they've got here. Second down here. They fake the handoff to Wilson. Hommel's going to go down the sideline again. He's got a man open. He catches it, and he's going to get in for the score. Number wow. eight, Miles Crisp basically mossed the, the defensive back. And he's getting up limping. I thought he was actually kind of having some issue when he caught the ball. Yep, and that was really dead. just a jump ball. I mean, when it came down to it, Hommel put the ball in the air. Miles Crisp had to come back, turn around, look at it, and jump up for the ball. And the receiver jumped with him. But Crisp was big enough to catch it, take it from him, and then turn around, run, and go in for the score. 
So that is disheartening for the Warriors, but that is exactly how the Cougars drew it up on third and four miles. So Hommel throws his uh, third touchdown of the night, his fifth touchdown overall of the night, 40-yard touchdown pass to Miles Crisp, who uh, Randy Moss, the defensive back that was covering him, extra point is good, and the score now is 33-14 to 14, uh, in favor of High Point Christian. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan Medlin hits his... Uh, Field goal attempt or extra point attempt. And the Cougars will get ready and get back on defense and see if they can't keep the Warriors uh, out of the end zone on the next drive. I got to say, Rod, we've seen a lot of different schools uh, across the triad for Scythe and Guilford County, different uh, classes of the public school ranks from 1A to 4A. We've seen some of the best of the best. I've been pretty impressed with this High Point Christian football team. This is the first time we've had a chance to call them. And uh, they seem very disciplined. Uh, very, the offense seems very smooth. You know, a lot of times mm -hmm. in high school, we'll see a high school that just does, you know, 50 rushes a game, or they're a spread offense and has, a, you know, like eight wide receivers, and they, they run them all all night long. High Point Christian's been running a nice blend. It's it's really kind of a college style offense where, uh, really not even college, really more of a pro style offense. Actually, now that I think about it, they've got a couple of really good running backs, uh, a quarterback with a great arm. Some good wide receivers and a massive offensive line, and that that equation, you're gonna you're gonna win more games than you lose more often than not if you're doing your job. That is for sure. Kickoff by High Point. It's fielded by Metrolina, and the runners running up the field. Good positive return all the way up to around the it's like around the 25 yard line where he was ran out of bounds, and that's where Metrolina will start this drive here. And they can't waste a lot of time down 33-14 to 14 with 8.39 to go in the game. They're going to need to score and score in a hurry. Yeah, they have to get into a state of urgency now. They're, they're, you wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw them running much more, no huddle, hurrying up to the line of scrimmage, and uh, just getting plays off as soon as possible because they have got to catch up. This time is not on their side right now. If you, if you missed it, or if you missed any portions of this game, uh, High Point Christian fans and Metrolina fans, you can listen to the replay of this game in its entirety starting at 5 p.m. tomorrow at TobaccoRoadSportsRadio.com. So definitely check that out. Meanwhile, first and 10 for Metrolina. Completed pass to number 88, who's been active tonight, Brian Kearns, for about a nine-yard pickup. is going to make it second and short. And there's a flag. Yeah, it looks like it's holding on the offense. So that's going to come back and make it a uh, first and 15. Yeah, you can't afford those type of penalties when you're down by double digits and you have less than 10 minutes remaining in the game. You have got to make no mistakes during this point of the game. Excuse me, first and 20. It's a 10-yard penalty for the hold. So the ball's going to get moved all the way back to It's like right around the – trying to see where they place this ball. Right around the 18 – so looks like it's on the Warriors' 18-yard line. Yep, so they've got a quite a bit of ways to go here. Yeah, the first down marker looks like it's way up at the 40, or excuse me, the 38, 39-yard line. So they got about 20 yards to go, first and about 20. Handoff here on first down. He's sandwiched by two Cougar defenders including number 34, Chase Cox, uh, one of the captains on this team, one of the middle linebackers, along with his brother, Colby, and both of them will be looked to be leaders on this team as they embark on this 2020 season. Looked like a good, strong run by Luke Gaskins, but uh, still not enough, nowhere near close to picking up the first down. But uh, it was a good, strong run. So we'll see what the Warriors can dial up now. Metrolina lines up for second down, just trying to chew up some yards to, to get that first. They're going to go downfield, though. Excuse me. Ball is thrown and caught for the first down and more. You know, the ball was thrown a little bit short. It Jeff. was. He had to come back for it. He did. Uh, As a matter of fact, if the defender had turned around, he could have possibly had an interception. But the defender did not turn around and look for the ball himself. Brian Kearns on that reception for Metrolina, and that brings the ball Closer to midfield, it's now around the – they did pick up the first down, so the ball is now at the Warrior 46-yard line, 47-yard line. High snap bobbled and fumbled, and it looks like High Point Christian might have jumped on that ball. I'm not sure. 
McAvoy tried to catch it, but it went over his helmet. He tried to get his hands on it and yeah, bobbled it. It hit the yeah, ground. Metro, Metro Lana keeps the ball. They were able to get on it, so it's going to bring up second down for them. So they're going to lose a couple of yards on that, but very lucky that they held, they kept it because the ball was on the ground for at least a, a hard second before somebody fell on it in the backfield. Yeah, these are the type of plays that you can't have when you're down by double digits. You just can't fumble the ball. You can't have high snaps. And, of course, you can't have penalties because when you do that, the defense and the other team who's winning, they're just smiling and saying thank you very much. <laughs> so 6.52 to go here in the fourth quarter. 33-14 to 14 is your score. High Point Christian leading Metrolina. Metrolina has the ball, though, on second down. They're going downfield again in double coverage, and that's going to be a flag. That might be p defensive pass interference. Yeah, there's no way they can call offensive pass interference on that one, so it's going to have to be defensive. It looks draped. like it was double coverage yeah, over there. It was draped by two defenders, and uh, the quarterback for the Warriors, um, Ryan McElvoy, tried to throw it in there anyway, but it looks like they're going to get rewarded with a pass interference period uh, penalty for it, and let's see what happens here. They're going to mark this off. They did call pass interference, and that ball's getting moved all the way up. Yep, so it's going to be an automatic first down situation. And they've crossed the midfield. They are now on the Cougars. Was well, that not an automatic first down? No, it's not. It's actually second, and it looks like about one. Maybe two. Can't see exactly where they've got that marker on the far side of the field. It's not far. Probably about a yard to go. Second and about one. Metrolina. McAvoy's going to go to the same play again over to the right-hand side. you got to think maybe the coaches saw something over there, but the ball sailed high on yeah, the, the wide receiver. The ball was a little bit high, but it should have been caught by the wide receiver. Uh, he got both hands on the ball, and it went right through his hands. It should have been caught. I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in to some high school football action here on a Thursday night. Game was scheduled for Friday, but due to the rain that's supposed to be coming in, tomorrow which is supposed to be heavier than it was here tonight we just had a really heavy miss through most of the night the game was moved to a 7 p.m kickoff today metrolina third down they're going to pick up the first and a couple more and a late flag here at the very end yeah that may be a face mask personal foul face mask looks like uh the runner has he was falling one of the tacklers for the cougars may have latched on to the face mask but we'll get the official call from the referee on the field. Yeah, personal foul, face mask. So that's going to tack on some yards and get the Metro line of Warriors a little bit closer to the end zone. And, of course, that will result in a first down. I want to thank everyone that's listening to our broadcast tonight here. TobaccoRoadSportsRadio.com is your home, your new home for Triad Sports. Lots of great sports talk on Saturday mornings. Lots of live sports throughout the weekends. And uh, just trying to give the Triad what they want, which is just pure Triad sports talk and analysis and coverage of your favorite teams. First down for the Warriors. Around the left-hand side we go. A sweep is going to run into the netting over here for the field goal kicker out of bounds. And that was uh, that was Joe Dilly. Joe he was Dilly. able to get to the edge. And pick up a good amount of real estate on that play. I like Joe Dilly. I ain't gonna lie. I like Joe Dilly. I like, I like his size. I like the way he runs the ball. He's and, a good-looking like kid. Name. I like his name, Joe Dilly. Yeah, he's a good-looking kid. He's 6'1", 190 pounds. There's and a penalty here on Metrolina, so that's going to come back and erase that run. Well, and again, when you're down, Des, you, you, as a coach, this has got to tear you up. You're putting together a nice drive. You get some penalties that go your way, some pass interference calls that go your way. And then as soon as you put your bruiser running back in to pick up some tough, hard yards, you get a holding call. So that is something that uh, just has to tear a coach inside out. It's kind of been like, like that all night for Metrolina. It feels like whenever they get some momentum going, a penalty or a turnover happens, and it kind of smothers that out. So we'll, we'll see if they can cash in on this. This has been a pretty long drive. It's 5.54 to go in the game. The score is 33-14 in favor of High Point Christian. But yet again, Metrolina is threatening. They just keep backing themselves up here. The refs are like they're trying to figure out where to place this ball. Yeah, they're threatening. I think they're trying to m figure out where to mark off the penalty yards from. Yeah, they're talking about it, trying to figure this out. The rain has subsided here. 
for now, but we know more is coming in on Friday. Yeah, but as we were saying, <coughs> you know, they're putting together a great drive. The problem is, like you said, Des, they keep backing themselves up, and in doing so in the fourth quarter, you're running out of time. Yeah. You have no more time. You can't make these mistakes. You have to score immediately in order to have a shot at winning this ball game. Visit the Pipe and Pint, thir uh, 3025 North Main Street in High Point, the largest selection of cigars and pipes in the Triad, rare tobaccos and accessories, complemented by the best curated selection of wine and craft beer in the Triad, the Pipe and Pint, 3025 North Main Street in High Point. One of the proud sponsors of the Friday Night Football Game of the Week. Meanwhile, Metrolina hikes the ball, a run around the sweep around the right-hand side. They get back most of that yardage all the way back up to the first down marker. Yep, and that was a good run or catch by Colin Fitch. He's a senior at 6'1", 225 pounds. I think that's one of their bread and butter pass plays. I've seen them do that a couple times tonight, and they've picked up pretty positive yardage on each opportunity that they've had to run that play. So Metrolina, again, right on the edge of the red zone. They're looking over their sideline for the play call. Clock is running. It's 5.14 to go in the game. Yep, and Metrolina is just taking too much Way time. Way too much There's time. There's no sense of urgency at all They're right now. They're down 19, and you would think that they would try to get this out of here in a hurry. They finally snapped the ball, handoff to Dilly. And there he was almost a fumble on that handoff. Yeah, he ran over a guy at the line and picked up some positive yardage. But you're right, Rod. I'm sitting here watching this here from the, the press box with you and watching Metrolina. There's no urgency with them whatsoever. With the clock running, well, it's stopped now at 4.52, but they're down 33-14, to 14, down 19 points on the road. And it doesn't seem like they're in a hurry to get the ball snapped right now. Yep, and you got to move. Like you said, you're on the road. You're trying to get some points on the board. You're trying to catch up. You're trying to give yourself a chance of winning the ball game. Because you got to expect that if they do score, there will be some type of onside kick that's going to be tried right here. But they are in field goal range right now as they line up to run the next play. First down and a whistle. And we've got a flag here. I uh, hope that's not a delay of game. We just talked about this, how they weren't really in a uh, pattern of urgency. And then to get a delay of game when you're trying to score. Delay of game on Metrolina. Yeah, I think when Metrolina goes back to the practice field, they're probably going to work on the two-minute offense a little bit more in practice. Because uh, I expected to see them really coming out, snapping the ball, and and moving at fast pace. So first down still for Metrolina. Fake handoff. McElroy looks to the right, doesn't see anything. He's going to take off running towards the left. Gets out of bounds after picking up about five or six yards. Yep, so he's somewhere near the 10-yard line, looks like. Uh, so they have about 10 yards. And again... Metrolina's moving very slow. They're walking back to the huddle instead of jogging back up to get in place and get in position to snap and, and, and make the next play. But uh, everyone seems to be moving slow. Not sure they're why. Looking, they're looking toward the <laughs> sidelines. Sure they haven't why. gotten the play in yet. Well, here we go. Second down for Metrolina in the red zone. Snap to McElroy. He's going to hand it off. To the left-hand side, I believe that was Dilly. Yeah, but he was unable to get out of bounds, so the clock will continue to run. Not Dilly, I'm sorry. Number no, 15, Tommy Miller. Had that one there. Yeah, so, uh, again, it's bringing up third down. Metrolina is walking back to the huddle again. Clock is ticking. 341, 40, 39. And Metrolina is moving as if they have the lead. They really are. They are moving as if they're trying to like run this clock out. It's really strange. They're looking over at the sideline for the call. They're finally getting set up here. Well, maybe they're bringing in the play that will definitely score on this next possession. And now we're going to get a timeout after all of that. Well, and the Cougars take the timeout. Yeah. So High Point wants to talk it over, make sure they have the right defensive end, and try and make a defensive uh, goal line stance here. Let's take a 30-second timeout. We'll be back in just a second. Friday Night Football Game of the Week brought to you by Tobacco Road Sports Radio, Beamer Tire and Auto, and the Pipe and Pint.
Beamer Tire and Auto Repair. Now with three locations across the triad in High Point, Greensboro, and our new location in Kernersville, Beamer Tire and Auto offers full service auto repair, all tire brands, free alignment checks, oil changes, and more. In Kernersville, check out the no appointment needed quick lube shop. Check out their thousands of five star ratings via Google and Yelp. They care because they know that you can go anywhere. So try a shop with a beating heart, not a bottom line. Beamer Tire and auto repair. Visit us on Facebook or at BeamRetire.com. Welcome to the Pipe and Pint, the oldest tobacco and specialty store in the triad of North Carolina. Come check out the largest selection of cigars and pipes in the entire triad. Rare tobacco, accessories, complemented by the best curated selection of wine and craft beer in the area. Visit our High Point location at 3025 North Main Street in High Point or call 336-858-5298. Must be 21 to enter. Proud sponsor of Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Visit the Pipe and Pint today. And another time out here. We're going to take another break here, but we're going to keep it here. Cougars had too many men on the field, and so they wanted to call another timeout to make sure they didn't get a penalty. I got to uh, uh, mention, we said it before, and, I, and I've apologized for it, and I'm getting dragged on Facebook for not pronouncing it correctly through most of the uh, the first quarter into the second quarter. Yes, it's Metrolina. We understand. <laughs> we I, I understand there's a lot of Metrolina fans out there upset that uh, I was pronouncing it wrong earlier in the game. Des, how dare you I, pronounce I, I, I Metrolina don't know. wrong? I'll, what is I'll, wrong with you? I'll put myself in the corner after the game is over here. Uh, <laughs> We're going to put you in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> it is Metrolina, not Metrolina. I do apologize. Um, meanwhile, back to the action here. In high point. We're going to finally get a snap here after two straight timeouts. Yeah, but McElvoy on, on third down is going to look in the end zone. He's got a man and finally a score. By Metrolina. And that was the old throwback play where the quarterback rolled to the right and he threw it all the way back against the grain of the field to an open receiver down at just beyond the goal line. I believe that was Joe Dilly with yep. the catch there. I think it was Joe Dilly, and that was a good play call from the coach. So maybe that's why they were taking so much time. They wanted to make sure they had the play that would definitely score. So the after all of that, the Warriors score – on a eight-yard uh, pass from McElroy to Dilly, that's going to cut the lead to 33 to 20 with 3:12 to go. Yep, and looks like uh, there's a stoppage of play on the extra point. Let's see what happened. Let's get the call from the field here. As it's we like wait on the ref, looks like, like, like the cheerleaders are definitely upbeat. Looks like the call is going to be against. High Point Christian, the refs are pointing that way. Yep, High Point Christian was offsides. That penalty is declined. And Metro Lana will come out and try and kick it again. And the extra point is good. So we can expect an onside kick coming up from the Metro Lana Christian Academy Warriors. Uh, let's see how the Cougars deal with this onside kick that is coming up. And this is where the game can get interesting if the, because it's 21 to 33. So it's still a 12 point game. So it's a two score game. They'll have to get this onside kick and score quickly. Uh, but like we mentioned before, Rod, uh, Metro Lina felt like they weren't really in an urgent sense of, of trying to move fast to score here. It was really more of a kind of relaxed 0-0 zero, zero tie type of uh, offense that they had. Yeah. They yeah. burned off at least two or three minutes on the clock down there uh, close to the red zone to finally score that touchdown. Yeah, and it looks like, you know, there, there's a little bit of work to do with Metro Lina. Uh, and, of course, all teams have a little bit of work to do. Well, There's been one, limited yeah. play. It's been limited training camp. It's been limited practices uh, due to what we're all going through out here with COVID-19. And, and everyone has been limited in something. And this is not exactly the same team that they had last year that beat uh, High Point Christian twice, including a 41-14 uh, beatdown 
in the playoffs last year. Now, I'm not sure about this, but this kicker lined up off sides. Um, but there was no penalty or no flag. Ball rolls all the way out of bounds. I didn't think that the kicker could do that. Uh, I don't think he can. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's illegal. So, we'll, no flag thrown on the play. I've never seen that before, actually. I've never seen a kicker. I've never seen a like kicker that. go over the line. Yeah, uh, I yeah. I don't think you're supposed to do that, but uh, no one called it. So, well, I know when I used to line up offsides, they called. <laughs> it. 